Reminders are always helpful. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, is, this close, are, is this close uh, enough? Or do you want me to fade back out? Am I too close? Uh, it looks good on mine. I don't I mean, think you're too uh, close. No, I, th- right. I think you're. I think you're good. I, um, I like myself on camera as much as uh, Shrek likes himself on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Uh, no worries. Well, don't, don't you mind. sell it better than we do, so you know. <laughs> And people Thank will be here you. for you, not us. Yeah, so. you're you're kind. Seriously, <laughs> uh, DreamWorks sends me cease and desist letters pretty much on a regular basis, saying, "Stop imitating Shrek." It's like, I'm not. I'm not. We'll Look, sue you. Yeah, you know, oh. I've had uh, I've had Warner Brothers come after me for looking like a goblin from Lord of the Rings. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> troll boy. I think my Is nickname it Warner was Brothers. Troll boy. I think so. Or it's New Line Cinema. Yeah, but, I was about uh, to say New Line Cinema would be. Yeah, the, I thought the or Warner Brothers. I think they were. Didn't they own the Hobbit properties? I thought they bought it out from New Line. I could be wrong. I can't remember yeah. to be honest. Mm-hmm. All, I, all I hope is, is they do not ma- remake. You know, there's there's talk being floated out there about rebooting the the trilogy. It's like no, no, no really. Don't do it. Yeah, Dude. yeah. Why? Why? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you? Why? You know, yeah, because it's twenty because it's twenty years old, and you can get away with it now. And there's a whole generation of kids that never watched it. Oh, but it's I perfect, know. and it stands the test of time. So I know it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. I I remember I went to the theater and saw all three uh, ten year anniversaries in the theater when oh, when they cool. when they came out. And oh no, yeah, there was somebody that watched it recently. It was a reactionary channel, and they said it was a younger group, maybe, maybe not even thirty years old, and they said this is probably the finest ten hours of film. Yeah, we have ever watched. And it's like, yeah, yeah. absolutely, it is. Yeah. yeah, it's like that in the original Star Wars trilogy. The original, yeah, trilogy. yeah, and and the comparison. Come on, yeah, I mean, there's people yeah. that argue, oh, what's better, the the Star Wars trilogy or the Lord of the Rings trilogy? It's like, no, I mean, the Star Wars trilogy is fine, but anyway. All right, yeah. Wait, are you? Are we recording? Are we doing this? Yeah, we're not live. We're not doing yeah. this live. Obviously, we're this. We're recording. We're just, we're just recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And can I, I get edit an, everything. Can I get an audio of this after you're done? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, we can absolutely send you the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Do you? And by the way, send me while while I have you on while we're while we're doing this. Uh, send me what email me your logo, whatever thumbnail. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys run. I will. Even if it's even if it's the Mark Sergeant Happy Flat Earth Day one, that's fine. But whatever one you guys want yeah. to see on my channel, we're jealous I, of that logo. By the yeah. way, that, that what Google, that Gmail logo that you have? That yeah, you have that, like the graphic. automated uh, in, in your in, in Gmail. Yeah. Uh, oh, that name. you get the automated <laughs> profile thing. How'd you do that? Do you want to know? Do you want to know? By the way, where I, where I stole that that little animation that was happening in the background? Yeah. Do you yes. want to know where I stole that? Yeah. I stole that from the closing because nobody watches it. The closing three minutes of the animated film Akira. Oh, is it really? Interesting. Yeah. So when when they when they're doing the whole metaphysical, you know, thing where there's where there's a little bit of narration happening, but the movie is already over and the credits haven't fully run yet. <laughs> There's yeah. this little thing where they're going through this weird atomic explosion thing, and I'm just hypnotized by it. I'm going, hey, uh-huh. you know what? I can totally use that. That's <laughs> awesome. So it thank you, for jealous. But I, all I did was I, I literally just planted a giant fe in the middle of that, and and clipped <laughs> out this awesome. little segment. <laughs> That's and awesome. It turned, and the, and it turns out to loop really well. Yeah. So, yeah, it really does. Yeah. Right. Do you hear? Uh, do you hear Tetsuo in the back of your head? <laughs> <Kaneda! every time? laughs> there's, there's, there's your there's your drinking game that will everyone will die from alcohol poisoning. <laughs> pick pick either Tetsuo or Kaneda or Kaneda. Yeah, e- we have one. the same thing uh, here. Where uh, like anytime I'm always like decrying things as being Luciferian. Yeah. So like it's become like a meme now for anybody. Who it's his catchphrase. Things like you have to take a drink anytime I say Luciferian. I even have it queued up here. Yeah, it's Luciferian. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe um, in in my in my circles. Oh, yeah, that comes up all the time. I bet it does. Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna um, hang on just just for argument's sake. I'm gonna pull up. Yeah. Uh, I want to pull up the camera settings just so you guys know what it looks like if I back it off. Oh yeah. Yeah. No problem. Is that better? Uh, it's your call. I, yes. I like call. Yes. No. You, you... no. Yes. <laughs> you know what? You, okay, farther away, farther away. Yeah, probably is a little bit better just because you see more of the background. You there you go. The background. All right, let's do that. I, I only zoom it in for uh, a podcast I do on Tuesday nights. 
and uh we're my producer's just yelling it's like you gotta zoom in a little more girl. You <laughs> you've, you've spent time with me man you know what, what can, cannot be well done. and you know you can mark you can save the zoom ins for dramatic effect you know that's true <laughs> yeah that's it's true. nice to have something like, in reserve a phalanx in reserve for the big like, push. are you trying to start a fight with me <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Mark, we're super happy to have you here. Yeah, thank uh, you, dude. Thank you for being so malleable with uh, with your oh, schedule. No, 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 no. Ha happy to do it. And um, I'm um, here, so everything's cool. Oh, good, good. Uh, I'm Jonathan. This is my older brother, Nick. And um, we, Howdy. you know, we do these kind of interviews. We pre-record them, and then uh, Nick goes out throughout the week and like does a little bit of editing and touch up to make sure that we don't get another strike on YouTube. Yep. And <laughs> then uh, it goes public, <laughs> and then the unedited version we reserve for our Patreon members. You know, so they can get like you know the full gamut and everything. Oh yeah, I better put our exclusive. Um, this is the exclusive but, portion. Here. Um, we have uh, probably a solid two hours. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. How, um, how much time do you have? I'll yeah, take two hours. Sure, let's do it. Yeah, sweet. Cool. Okay. And um, what we kind of wanted to do, um, first of all, I've been perusing your channel pretty heavily for the past uh, probably month and a half to two months. I had seen some other stuff of yours before. But I was doing more of a deep dive, and uh, it's awesome stuff, man. Thanks. And uh, you're very congenial. We are too. We're not like the debate guys. We're not the yeah. argument guys yeah. or anything. We try to have a very positive, friendly, you know, uh, collegiate atmosphere on the Goslings, which is, I think, why we get so many awesome people to come back. Um, it's a real feather in our cap and a real blessing. But like Nick, so like I'm like 95% sold on flat earth. Yeah. okay right. so like i'm i'm like almost there yeah and then uh and i basically am there but just like there's if you're 95 percent there you're there right just so you know you're you're yeah. holding out for insurance reasons you're holding out <laughs> just yes. in case yes. in, in case well our put. community just collapses you could say well i wasn't totally with them oh no no that's <laughs> yeah. everybody in our community does that at Do one they point really? they, they're holding on by their fingertips they're holding on yeah and they're like and then one day like ah, screw it they just like go yeah, and, right. Uh, yeah, that's. I, it's also kind of how I feel about credit cards. By the way, are there are there story. are there are there people in your community that are that are there ninety five percent there or all the way there, but in public they're not. Oh, like totally. they don't want to. Most yeah. most of our community uh, is in the closet still to this yeah. day. They, okay. uh, I mean, I I've I've met them. I've talked to a whole bunch. I've got family members that yeah. that you know. I've got some family members. They're like, yeah, yeah, we're totally with you. And I've got cousins. They're like. Totally with you. Don't ever say that in public. I will deny <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had, I've met with celebrities of uh, just about every kind you could think of who wow. said, oh, yeah, yeah, there's tons of celebrities that are into it. But because of the backlash, we, we can't possibly do it. I had a guy from, oh, God, what was that show? Navy SEALs, I think. Yeah. He, um, one of the guys, I'm not going to say his name. He, uh, he came to one of our, our, our podcast shootings down in Los Angeles and he comes up to me later afterwards right shakes my hand blah blah you know meet and greet he's like i was never here <laughs> go, okay. who sure. is uh maximum who, opsec who would you say is the biggest celebrity that you know of that is actually like that's, publicly that's said? out yeah that's oh, not in the closet about that. that's tough that's tough um sports figures <sighs> I mean, Kyrie Irving, basketball, tennis. Well, number one, Novak Djokovic. She's absolutely ours. Uh, Nick Kyrgios, if you know tennis at all, he just came out. Um, football. That's a tough one because Aaron Rodgers is not out, but I know he's he's one of ours. Uh, acting, probably the biggest would be, and you guys look pretty young, uh, Kelsey Grammer would probably yeah. be Yeah, is he no. really? Kelsey Frasier? Grammer? Yeah, well, I went to his house. Frazier's I hung out with you been to Frazier's house? Yeah, I did. I my God, you, dude! I, 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 uh, my family, we all want to go see the new movie that he's in that he put yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen uh, it at all? Have you? Have no, you seen it I haven't. I've heard about it. Uh, okay. What is it? It's what? called the Jesus Revolution. It's about the what? Jesus movement back in the seventies. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've heard. I've heard a lot of things. In fact, it was. I was surprised when I heard he took it. It's like really, yeah. really, you're gonna go for that? But again, a lot of a lot of A-listers, they're grabbing anything they can because Hollywood's just turned upside down recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, it's well, a thinking ship. Well, you know, it's interesting about the releasing of that movie uh, about being like the Jesus movement and the revival in the 70s. It happened to come out, be released two weeks after the uh, Asbury uh, revival, revival. Oh, that, yeah. that may or may not have been 
planned. It's a little orchestrated. Gotcha. It seemed a little orchestrated right Possibly after the contrived. Grammys. Right, the, Asbury was a week after the Grammys, and then two weeks later, the notorious the, rev, the, the revival Grammys. movie comes out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I question. Here, I'll, I'll I don't doubt you... it. I just question it. No, no. I'll give you a list of. In fact, I've got a. I've got a mainstream mainstream media. This mainstream part is media? definitely exclusive. People would. I'd get excoriated. If I were to say that, Main dude, I would pay money to find out that information. Mm -hmm. Like, on, this, let me see if I can paste can I do it? the chat room, chat room, private chat. So if I paste this in, yeah, you see mainstream media. Yeah, there we go. Fox Flat Earth. I mean, um, younger actors. Oh, the girl from Stranger Things. She's no kidding. Eleven. Yeah, she's one of ours. Uh, uh, she uh, she went through Shane Dawson of all people. Go figure. Um, I had a chance to go down, uh, and uh, before Shane, Dawson. the girl with supers or the hero or the normal girl from no, 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 the, no, the, the superpower girl, yeah, the, the, nice. the girl who was did, she just did two movies, um, the, you know, the Sherlock, Holmes, the uh, uh, younger sister, uh, oh. Enola Holmes, if I'm okay. not mistaken. If you've seen, if you haven't, you haven't seen those, they're actually not terrible. If you're Sherlock Holmes. Yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hold on a sec. That's it's right. playing. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. careful you're gonna click any of those. Yeah. A Andrew Tate, before he was incarcerated, he was one of ours. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Uh, who I'll else is on off. that list? Hang on. Yes. Uh Candace Owens. I get Candace I Owens. I can see that. Yeah. Oh, this is juicy. Yeah. Oh, we Thank got you. her. We got her now. Uh, I could see Dan that. Yeah. Daniel Daniel Tosh has done too many of our things to to not be one of ours. Yeah, uh, Ellen Ellen Alda is very flat curious. Really? Yeah. Now, that's a surprising one. I like he, that he, term flat curious. Yeah, he's in a video on here where he's like, talking on the view about yeah. it, which is just blows my mind. In fact, really? I went down to Shane Dawson's studio right after that interview took place where Alan Alda was, because he he had watched a Shane Dawson video. He's like, oh, yeah, this Flat Earth thing seems really, really interesting. It's like, okay. Interesting. Um, Man, this is... I think, oh, uh, different wrestlers. Uh, quite a few sports figures, as you can imagine, yeah. because they have a lot of downtime. People mm -hmm. forget that if you're on the road, especially basketball and baseball, yeah. you are going down a whole bunch of rabbit holes. That's how Kyrie got into it. You, you know, you're flying between cities, and then that Kyrie got in himself into trouble because he he was so high on life. He was like 24, championship ring was brand new. LeBron James is his best friend. He's flying to the All-Star game and his buddy uh oh crap, what is his name? Reggie something. He's a commentator now. Uh when they were playing at Cleveland, um he gets him in a perfect mood. It's like, yeah, you want to talk about it? Yeah, I want to talk about it. Oh, good. <laughs> and then he releases that podcast before they even touch down. And the next day is media day. What do you think happens there, right? You know, <laughs> media day are, is super boring because athletes, you know, it's the most boring interviews everywhere because you, oh. you always know what you're going to get, right? Well, it's a yeah. offense. It's defense. It's 110%. It's coaching. Mm -hmm. We don't know. I respect the other team. Blah, 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 right? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That guy over there. He's into flat earth, right? And he's, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, rawr, 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 you know, this <laughs> yeah. yeah, is report. all a lie. Yeah. Yeah, that's all anyone would want to talk to him about. Of and course. he didn't awesome. he didn't realize it's like, yeah, once that gloss of the championship fades away, those yeah. same journalists, they have access to your locker room every single night you are playing. And what do you think they want to talk about? They're not gonna talk about how many assists you got. No, yep. they're, they're going to bring it up to where he went. I'll, I'll, give, I'll throw one little thing in for you. Um, He went to, he was, num he, well, he won, uh, you know, that uh, Forbes 30, 30 people under 30, the age of 30, you know, some sort of award thing. So he was on stage yeah. and the media was saying, oh, no, he's recanting. He's recanting. No, 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 no. He apologized to the inner city science teachers because what was happening was, you can imagine, right? Inner city science teachers are going, okay, well, here's the globe. Yeah, it's a, and all of a sudden, hands yeah. start going up in the back, right? And like, yeah. yeah so my what about line of sight? Yeah. Uh -huh. Mike, no, 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 not even that. No, they're going off just straight up social media credibility. 
which is oh, my man man Kyrie. He makes thirty million dollars a year. He's got his own shoe. He's got his own commercials. He's got blah blah blah. He's like, it's like, what do you got, Teach? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and so all That's these hard. teachers were writing Kyrie saying, "Dude, you are killing us. <laughs> we got nothing. How, what are we supposed to respond with? Because the kids don't yeah. care about. It's like, well, I got a, I got a certificate on the wall. I have my master's right. degree and blah blah. It's like they don't care. They don't care. Social media credibility is now. Uh oh. Oh crap. Oh, okay, there you are. We, we got, got you. Back. Social media. Oh, okay. So we got social media credibility is now. Oh, yeah, social media credibility is now the currency. Yeah, absolutely the currency. Uh, not to go off on a on a whole separate thing, but if you've never seen, you guys either seen if you watch a lot of documentaries. By the way, did you ever watch the documentary that I was in? No, I don't one? think so. No. Oh my god, look this up. It's uh, it's uh called Behind the Curve. It was on Netflix for like three years. Really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the all the main people. We we shot it in, we shot it in 2017. It was bought in. It went to all the film festivals in 2018, and then okay. everybody picked it up. Amazon and YouTube and Netflix. That's and, awesome. And, <laughs> yeah. Um. But that. But anyway, this is a whole other thing for another time. But seriously, watch if you want. Is it is, is it a hit hit piece on flat Earth? Yeah. But mm -hmm. is it a fair look at a year in the life of flat earth back in you know back of the day it was literally the culmination of it was the first conference that we did in raleigh north carolina uh which was amazing and so many so much media showed up for that because they didn't think it was real a lot of people don't know um that they will send recon teams to the whatever event it is they'll send like one guy usually Right. And they'll be like, you know, is it real wherever you're going? And the people, you could see these guys on the phones that you need to send a team down here right now, right? And so all That's these really teams overnight flew in from everywhere. And uh, it was just a, it was a freaking zoo. I had three hot mics on constantly. I didn't even know who, there were, there were so many cameras. We didn't know who we were talking to at any given point. It was, it was just awesome. Anyway, wow. sorry, real quick. The, um, there's a documentary called, if you haven't seen it, called Fake Famous. It is brilliant okay. in that it is the, the concept is, is they, they take six kids, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a standard formula, which is take six kids that are on social media, just starting out and see if you can make them famous for nothing, mm -hmm. for doing nothing. Right. And there, there were two quotes, which I really loved. One was when you ask kids nowadays what they want to be when they grow up. Right. Oh, yeah. The, the professions are gone. There are no professions anymore. All they want to be is famous. No right. Wants to be an astronaut anymore. No, no, no. Nobody wants to be. Yeah. Nobody wants to be a you know, fireman, policeman, rock star. Yeah. No. What? And you say, I want to be famous. OK, what what do you want to be famous for? What do you mean? I just yeah. want to be famous. It's I just like, want to be Paris Hilton. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, well, even Paris Hilton has the name. She's just a party girl that, you know, came from a hotel dynasty. Yeah. But there's there's all these kids that are they want to be you know they want to be as famous as the people that they're watching the videos it's like yeah but they're not the but you you have to do something you have to be one of the five forms of art mm -hmm. so the other thing was and so what the, what's happening is there are kids out there that are spending every cent they have at low you know low-end jobs to buy subs and hits and comments and all this from offshore accounts yep and it is, it is, in fact, the, what the quote the guy said, which I love because I'm not on Instagram. He goes, he goes, he goes, you realize there are millions of people on Instagram with at least 100,000 subs, millions of them. He goes, that's impossible. It can't, you know, because there's, oh, there's less than 10,000 famous people in the world at any given time. And that includes all sports and acting and uh, there's less than 10,000 people. So how are all these kids, you know, because they're just buying them and, buying and the them. numbers equal credibility and therefore... Mm -hmm. I mean, Pew PewDiePie being the the ultimate, you you know who that guy is, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay. and Beast and Mr. Beast. He he practically invented, you know, he was the guy that that did it the most because what he figured out was he figured out there was a, a kickback to it, which was you buy hits, right? Buy hits from an offshore account, right? Mm -hmm. Those hits then generate money on YouTube because they pay you per hits per watch, right? Yep. Yep. Which means you're getting a discount and then you take some of that money and you sink it back into it. It could become cyclical. Right. And it so is. you're just building this up. Building it. Well, when do you stop? Because all of a sudden he was at 60 million subs and the next person down, I think, was Katy Perry with 30 million. But nobody <laughs> knew who Katy Perry was. Right. Yeah. And then to where even Hollywood jumped in on it. I know I'm, I'm off in the weeds here. We'll come back in a second. Where, where Hollywood jumped on it, gave him his own show. 
right? Wow. Known, for, for, tell, show, I think it was called Let's Prank PewDiePie or something like that. And nobody watched it. I mean, it just mm-hmm. freaking died immediately. And the producers are like, what happened? What happened? It's like, well, because, you know, where are all the millions of people that, that, that follow him? It's like, they aren't there to begin there with, are. man. And, yeah, uh-huh. they are and, there. And, but yeah. because of that, that so many, and but I've, how many kids did I talk to? It's like, oh, PewDiePie's Pew, totally legit. He's totally credible. It's like, why? Because cool, he's got 60 million subs. It's like, what? And now there's people, I think, upwards of he and another guy, The they were up like 100 million. It's like, they're, to where the numbers are mil- meaningless. Yeah. It's like, really? 100 million? Really? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The numbers. Yeah. Well, and the numbers all feed back into the algorithm. And just yes. like you say, the algorithm pays you through ad revenue and clicks, and it also gets you more sponsorships. Yeah. That money gets fed back into buying more bots and fake accounts. And it's just, and, yeah, it is, and you will pick up fake. some real people along the way because, as you know, uh, if a million people jump off a bridge, well, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. That if bridge you, is, you got to jump off that bridge. Yeah, yeah. So if a million people, it's like a million subs, their kids will be like, oh, they will immediately sub to them. It's like, well, a million people are already sub to them. I have to sub to them because right. I don't want to be left out. Yeah, this what if this this person obviously has something interesting of, of value because they have we'll 1.4 don't worry, we'll million subs. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and it's it's tempting when you're coming up through the ranks to like spend you get those dumb ads, those dumb offers from people, especially Instagram where it's oh. like for seventy dollars a month, you you know we will <laughs> give you four thousand hits and two hundred subscribers. Real sub, you know? real people, real, 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 yeah, real yeah, followers, and, and real followers. But but if you haven't but you haven't watched it, really watch it because it's interesting watching the reactions of yeah. the different people that they tried to escalate. And of course, the pretty yeah. girls got even more boosting because if you're a pretty girl, you're gonna get you know yep. do do well because women on the internet. If you can, oh, yeah. if you have the skin for it, if you mm-hmm. can, if you can dodge the bullets. I mean, one of our people, uh, Patricia Steer, who's in the documentary, who you probably haven't heard of if you're just getting into this, uh, very pretty uh rich and jewish so she's a triple threat on the internet yep. you know, and, and <laughs> yeah. she's gonna get hit three and she read every single comment and and i told her i go you can't keep reading and sanitizing every single comment you'll you'll go insane i go what happens when you get 100 videos up 200 videos up you're gonna keep doing it. she goes yes i am it's like your funeral yeah eventually she cracked she yeah freaking, she freaking snapped and and just burned everything down well i think what well, mostly because uh, in the end Somebody did a, you know what a wellness check is? Oh yep. yeah. yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. did a wellness check on her house. Uh huh. They 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 doxed her, and so women, yeah. To this day, for example, like I, you you go if you go to any of my videos, if you notice in the description box, my physical address, my real name, my real phone number, everything you could ever want to know about me. I'm I'm self doxing, right? Yeah. But I tell women, I go never ever ever put your phone number up on the internet ever. Oh yeah. Because uh-uh. you know, because guys, two drinks and three in the morning, you will get phone calls. Mm-hmm. From yep. from people you have never met, if you're a guy, yeah, and you it doesn't even a, have to be a, a number. You can get you know Facebook, you know uh, Messenger calls, FaceTime calls. You can get oh, yeah. Instagram calls. You know, it's just uh, yeah, and like you don't have to be a PI to find people anymore. You yeah. know, uh, you no. really don't. It takes no. very little to like with enough time, and if you know where to look, yeah, it's uh, and that's why there are no girls on the internet. It's an old, it's an old like four chan <laughs> meme. It's oh, one of the dude, rules. Dude, I got like, rule I got thirty four. Old... You know. I, got, I got an old meme for you back in the <laughs> Warcraft days, right? When I was playing nice. Warcraft, there was this mm-hmm. great little, I think it was an onion article and mm-hmm. it was like, more girls are playing Warcraft and we'll speak with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, old school, like 2010 onion is like, th- that was like peak. That was like peak onion time. Cause that's when oh, they, were that making, awesome. like, they were making all the funny videos, you know, and just, ah, yeah. We could probably good days. spend another. You good know, days. before we, um, uh, I have one question yeah. for that. Before we get out of the yeah. exclusive content, did you have anything just for the exclusive content before uh, we get out of there? No, I was just going to say the way we kind of want to do it is, you know, Jonathan's ninety five percent there. Yeah, I am. I'm an open minded skeptic. I'm not a debater. That's I right. have the questions that I'll that I, that I have are questions you probably heard a thousand times. So Let's I'll be in. You come up with an original question, gold star, and I will let you know. <laughs> I, I bet I am not the first to think well, of any of these things. Because I've been but, doing uh, this now for eight years, so yeah. I've gotten a lot. And and you got to remember that I had to answer, I had to ask a lot of these questions myself before I even made my first video. Yeah, because I wasn't. Yeah. I I'm old enough to where I knew what the internet would do to me if I just walked into it and just missed something obvious. So yeah. I treated it like a like a blue book exam at university where. 
I, you know, Smart. I'm 90 percent, 90 something percent sure that I got this. But, but as you're handing it, in, it's like, man, did I miss something? Did I miss something? It's like, nope, I'm going to put it down and hopefully I got it. So, <laughs> uh-oh. Well, um, I, uh, you know, there I'm not going to be like, well, what about this? Well, what about this? Or it's not going to be an argument or a debate or anything like that. But just kind of your, you know, when you were in that place or when you know somebody's in that place and they're curious, just like the like the most what is what what were some of the most compelling things that kind of pushed you over the edge and uh so th- those are kind of the things that i'm gonna okay but you don't want to ask those right now or not not, to... not quite yet we're gonna get okay. to those maybe just kind of throw them out there one at a time okay um uh, there was some oh yeah i watched uh like the first 20 or so of the flat earth clues videos and, oh cool uh, that's, they're that's all, pretty much all of them yeah it, and it, they were all i mean they were all really good oh, and uh you. these are some questions that came up while i was watching those um but uh that's all I was going to say before you go into yeah. your, your question. And um, and we do have a Patreon uh, member question that we'll get to. Uh, you know, it might not be a bad idea. Would you want to start with the Patreon member question? Uh, once we get out of the uh, exclusive, I'll, I'll throw it in there. Once we, okay. Yeah, I'll throw it in there. We always try to make sure we take care of our Patreon members. And like for certain tiers, we like allow them to, you know, ask a question to the guests. So. Yeah. Um, but for, for exclusive stuff, what do you, what do you need? Would you want anything else special? I mean, do you want me to like, I, I'll tell you, like as part of the exclusive stuff that only the Patreon members will see that will not be in the public YouTube, um, interview, the public version, my only other question, since we're kind of in that safe space to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that South Parkian safe space, uh, is do you, um, how many like pilots or military veterans or like oh. higher up echelon guys do you encounter who are like on the down low about flat earth much like the celebrities that we were talking about earlier oh yeah 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 in fact i have a list boy that started early that was one of the reasons this thing really really took off Interesting. uh here let me i will put this in here for you i've got a special playlist called flat earth testimony shows by subject matter experts and put this right there there you go and what it is is uh i ha- i immediately you know because when i put the clues out there i thought that that academics were going to shoot me down in, in two seconds i thought there's somebody mm-hmm. was going to call me up from some university it's like all right jack knocker here's where <laughs> you went wrong and if, you to, if you're trying to carry the two here you can shut down your youtube channel now and i had people um initially started with a, a sparrow missile instructor from the united states navy Interesting. who called me up and did not want to be anonymous and i knew what he was going for I knew eventually he wanted to get out of the Navy and it was a win-win because if you throw him out for saying he's flat earth, oh, that's a, that's a book and a TV movie of the week. And if you don't throw him out, well, hey, great. He, you know, he, he can't lose. He, he yeah, can't lose yeah. either way. But because he still of, gets the book. <laughs> yeah, he still possibly gets the book. So yeah. because of that, all sorts of different people started calling me, all branches of the military, um, engineers, uh, air traffic controllers. Uh, I mean, well, heck, if I go into the list real, real fast, I mean, rattle them off for you. Um, cool. Uh, Navy missile instructor, Navy submarine chief, career land surveyor, Navy submarine chief, flight instructor, industrial valve expert. He was brilliant. Uh, U.S. Army artillery radar operator, international shipping extra, uh, expert, corporate travel agent. You wouldn't have thought that wouldn't have caught my eye Interesting. but it did because they dealt mostly with southern hemisphere which uh, okay. make any sense. uh u.s air force navigator australian intelligence officer air traffic controller u.s army master gunner uh u.s army aviation ground training combat experts a usda surveyor mason etheric science researcher commercial airline captain defense intelligent agent. it goes on and on and on and it, there's just Every one of them went on, you know, with the exception of one, the industrial valve expert, he did not, he figured he, someone would, would figure out who he was. So he had me read a statement, which was interesting because he, he, he works for a military contractor. And what he was basically saying was, just a side note, that submarines, the especially pressurized things like naval, naval ships, but submarines especially, they are very, very precise about their parts to where almost every Navy vessel has a full-blown machine shop on board. To And and we they helped make the parts for this stuff. And he's going, there is no way. He, he was basically comparing everything to the ISS because the ISS has to be basically like a submarine only in space mm-hmm. because it's impossible. 
because the ISS cannot run as advertised. It absolutely cannot. We make the seals for these things. How in the world are they getting this crap up there? The, the stuff they're talking about would weigh tons. And, you know, you're talking about aluminum and plastic for the entire vessel. I think it was fascinating. So let, let, anyway, lots and lots of people, commercial airline pilots. Um, I'll, I'll give you two quick stories. Um, one was there's a KLM pilot, 30 year woman out of uh, KLM out in uh, out in Europe. And she got fired for yeah. talking about it. Uh, she 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 had a chip on her shoulder, but basically she went into the the health. You know, they do a health exam every six months or whatever it is there. And there's like anything else, you know, I should know. And she's like, yeah, well, I believe in flat earth. And immediately the examination changed to where it's like, well, OK, you can't go back up until you renounce that. And she's going fine. Put me on a desk. I don't care. And, wow. and she got mm. to that point where there was there was nothing to lose. Interesting. Uh, a, another one, though, real fast, I'll tell you. And this guy didn't wasn't on a show, but it'll show you to tell you the, the anonymous side of it. So I was flying back from an interview I'd done in um, London, flying Iceland Air, bouncing off of Reykjavik to, from London to Seattle. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Land in Seattle, going through customs, waiting for our baggage, blah, blah, blah. Pilots and the staff are sitting over in a corner. And one of the pilots walks over to me and he's like looking around. He's going, dude, I go, yeah, he goes. Can I get a selfie with you? Did not ask my name exactly <laughs> who I was, right? And he goes, and he goes, can I get a selfie with you? I go, yeah, yeah, sure. I go, I go, you take selfie. He goes, love your work, blah blah blah. And I go, I go, man, I go, I go, who are you? He goes, he goes, oh, I flew you here. He's <laughs> like, really? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah. He goes, I gotta get back to the group. He, you know, he said, <laughs> he walks over to his group and you know, it's kind of mingles with them. I guarantee he did not bring up my name to them at all. Sure. And, you know, it's like, who's that guy? Oh, nobody. Just some weirdo. You know, who knows what he what he said? But it kind of feels like that high school stuff. You know, those after school specials where, you know, you don't want to admit friendship with certain clicks. You can't uh -huh. click jump. That's what yeah. that's what I run into quite often. So interesting. Should have asked if he could sit in the cockpit. You know, I know. Right. I mean, <laughs> go, figure, go figure that he would at the end single me out. Of course, and, but apparently there's a lot of pilots that know because when you're out of the front, looking out of the front of the window, you see exactly what you should see because right. it's absolutely flat all the way across, and you can mm -hmm. see way further. Sorry, one more quick thing for your exclusive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Look, look up something called. There's a every once in a while a cool story will show up that inadvertently helps our community. One is the SR-71 pilots. There's an XFR-71 pilot that goes around, did a book, and goes around doing little speaking engagements about how cool it was to be in the Blackbird, right? Uh -huh. And, he would, and he would con he'd constantly do that stuff. He has kind of a higher-pitched voice, but it didn't matter because it was everyone's like, oh, SR-71. The SR-71, by the way, which is still flown, went from inception to semi-retirement. Nobody even heard about it. It was that secret, right? Don't forget that there are no spy planes, right? There are no spies. Oh, we have an intelligence community, but there are no spies. You know, so it's, it's that stupid stunt games we play. Double speak, yeah. yeah. Yeah, double speak. It's like, we all know they're spies. You make movies about them all the time. So yeah, we don't, we don't have them, though. Uh -huh, so, yeah. And even if we did, we couldn't tell you, wink, wink. Yeah. So they, um, so like when the, there was no U-2 spy plane until one was shot down over the Soviet Union, right? And even then, <laughs> was, oh, no, that was a NASA research plane. Like, really? Because he was a military guy that was flying. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, for the SR-71 when we retired it, I think in the late seventies, semi-retired it, they, they announced it at this air force base. And it was kind of them showing off. It's like, Oh yeah, by the way, here's the press coming in. It's like, Oh, we're retiring our spy plane. The, the blackbird, the what now? No, oh, yeah, it was our spy plane. We were using it. <laughs> right. And what do you think? You know, one of the, the reporters says, it's like, Hey, what are you replacing with it? When, you know, the general goes, air force general goes, Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's all you're gonna give them of course you're gonna replace it with something and you already have replaced it with something but you're not gonna tell anybody because yeah, you that's can't tell anybody spy plane. so uh -huh. this sr-71 pilot said a couple things which really caught our attention one was when he was flying over phoenix he could see the coastline of los angeles and he was only at about seventy thousand feet that's way too far yeah. Way, way too far. Um, because you remember when you're at that altitude, the air is very, very thin, so you can see further because the air is thin. What we're breathing in now is about as thick as you can get it, even though it looks transparent to us, it's only 99.999 percent transparent. Same thing, it's like what wa wa with water when you're looking at a you see scuba divers looking at whales a hundred yards away, they start fading away. Oh, heck, a, a diver, if he goes down even 200 feet and the sun's directly overhead, it'll go black, yeah, because mm -hmm. the sun cannot penetrate, right. 
So he also, but that wasn't the part that caught my eye. The part that caught my eye was, yeah, and by the way, while I was with Phoenix, if I turned my head and looked to my right, I can see where the Rocky Mountains met Canada. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Wow. That, that, that is tough to do if it's there's the curvature of the earth. You you know, eventually that, you know, that hill, I don't care if you're at 70,000 feet. And there's curve calculators out there. And, you're, you know, he can see way, way, way further than he should. To where we have guys now that are taking commercial airline flights with uh, nano filter uh, cameras and shooting long distances at 35,000 feet. And the stuff they come up with, look up a channel called uh, J. Tolan Media. Fantastic guy. It was a thick, thick European accent. I just love listening to him because he draws everything out. He'd be the worst narrator ever for, for, for <laughs> like, Look at what I'm seeing off in the distance. Is that Lake Michigan? I don't know. <laughs> How are you from, Dracula? Jeez, I can't even Anyway. All right, there you go. There's That's my good. Story. Good stories. Dude, that is awesome That's good stuff. stuff. Okay, sweet. <laughs> well, um, we'll do, uh, yeah, we'll go to like the normal yeah. version and yeah. uh, just a brief intro. Mark okay. Sargent, uh, flat earth extraordinaire specialist here on the Goslings to tell us all about flat earth. Um, I am fairly convinced. I am, as as you say, like I'm 95% there. So Mark, uh, you're, I think you're right. Like I'm pretty much there. I just have to have my little social credit score escape hatch. Uh, yep. Nick is a little bit more on the fence. So it's almost like it's going to be a convince a Nick podcast. Yeah, yeah it is. We, yeah, very much so. I mean, we're, we're a couple of, we're a couple of Christian writers that yeah. like to talk about weird stuff and you know jonathan and i are on the same page about a lot of stuff like yeah bigfoot know, yeah bigfoot aliens nephilim, oh yeah the know. nephilim genesis 6 all that yeah uh but there's a couple of things in which we kind of you know diverge a little bit and one of them is flat earth yeah and uh and so i'm like you know what how cool would it be yeah you know to have you know because you try to talk me into it oh yeah you try to convince times. me quite a bit but but Nick i also have someone like mark Sargent. As as I do, so. well <laughs> That's, that's a big part of it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hate him. <laughs> He's, he doesn't have the demon inside of him. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought it'd be really cool to have like, yeah, Mark Sargent and Jonathan gang up on me, and uh, just beat him mercilessly. Yeah, I am. I'm. I am the. Uh, I'm not the. Uh, I'm not the belligerent. I'm not going to believe what's right in front of my face type of guy. Yeah, uh, I'm the open-minded skeptic. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, I, I, first off, I never have to beat up on anybody. In fact, uh, I, the disclaimer I throw out to people, and it is not reverse psychology, is if you wake up every morning and like your life the way it is and everything is awesome, as the song goes, uh, <laughs> then don't look at this. Do not, you know, it's kind of a Morpheus line, but it's true, yeah. which is because if you go down too far, you can't unsee it. You yes. can't come back from it. It's very matrixy. <clears throat> Because yeah. in which is why I, I tell people like oh, look I'm not going to convince you that it's a, that it, that you're not living on a globe I'm not even going to try to persuade you I'm just going to throw the idea at your head because you have to tear it down yourself and because yeah. you tear it down yourself in the end how you go how are you going to build back into it which is why Cipher was so you know I confused me it's like how are you trying to get back into the Matrix and have mm -hmm. your memory wiped that doesn't even make sense go back mm -hmm. in knowing everything at least you'll have fun for whatever your lifespan is going to be. By the way, such because, cool because you guys are Christian writers, did you ever, ever look into it? I don't know if I ever sent this to you uh, in an email. Uh, Testingtheglobe.com. Mm, I've heard of that. The, it was from the the well, the now late Rob Skiba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where it was. Yeah, Rob yeah. Skiba. Yeah, the, he did a God website. It's still up there called Testingtheglobe.com, and he did amazing, amazing work. In fact, he would have had way more mainstream content, uh, it, and he would have been in the documentary, but... Uh, the the media will not touch. I'll give you a quick story. When I was doing when I was doing the thing um, for National Geographic down in in Los Angeles, there was a kind of a a war between producers don't like each other, and so CBS was down there as well, and they were going to talk with Jaron, but Jaron couldn't make it. And so they CBS came to me and they said, "Hey, who else can we talk to here?" And I go, "Well, see that guy getting mobbed by all those people? That's Rob Skiba." I go, he's yeah. bigger than I am. In fact, there, I, I've done conferences with him where the, he can't even get off the stage because people are just not like women are throwing underwear at him. <laughs> right. but they, just, yeah. they just they just love him so much. Yeah. yeah. And he does. And he and he's been, he was doing public presentations years before we were doing Flat Earth. He just transitioned over. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I said, and and you know, the interns are clicking on their, you know, click, 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 and, they, and they look and they're shaking their heads, and they go, "No, nah, too churchy. We can't, we can't talk to him." And so they wouldn't. And so CBS refused to talk to him. And so I go, "Come up with somebody else." I go, okay, well, Patricia Scare, she's perfect. She's camera ready. Get her on there. And but it always amazed me that Rob was excluded from as many things as he was mm, yeah. because uh, because of that. The media to this day, I mean, you guys know the mainstream media does not want to, uh, quote, have chapter and verse quoted to them at any given point. Yeah, you, like, you get right. in trouble if you say Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you do. You do. Um, and so which is weird, all things considered. But how but open minded of them? Yeah. yeah I, I well you it. know there's power in the name and and like and that sounds always yeah. hokey when i say it to my own ears but i think it's true like i remember working in a corporate office building just a few years ago and yep. uh you know surrounded by you know a bunch of feminized normies right. you know and uh and like blue you could you, you can say blue team by the way i call it uh, red, blue, red, team. Red, blue team huh? oh yeah, my red, gosh red yes. team, blue team yeah so it was the most blue team office environment you can imagine and you could quote the bhagavad gita you could quote the quran you could you know quote yeah the the talmud you could talk about any guru any you know egyptian deity but man if you start quoting the new testament or jesus you start bringing up you know that Mm. The, oh, yeah. the, the whole room gets tight <laughs> you, you, and icy yeah <laughs> which which surprised me when i made the clues because the christian community I, and i i was raised evangelical i'm sorry evangelical born again christian uh you know church just was wasn't just a sunday thing yeah and when i the, the christian community came at me really quickly and said you're dancing around the issue of god too much to you've got to you've got to sort this out now you know, how does Flat Earth, go, you know, this is before Rob Skiba made his website, which I highly recommend to people, where I had to, I had to do a clue that talked about Flat Earth in relation to God, to where I I ended up making a clue and I wasn't shy about it. I said, okay, the clue is called, they are hiding God. And that's where I got into it. And I quoted uh, um, Genesis, you know, the the story of the, the Tower of Babel. Which I still yeah. think today is just a wonderful story, even though it's so short. It's tiny, yeah. but but yeah. you could I extrapolated it out, which was you know the uh, the first civilization that figured out where they were. They figured out that it was a structure, there was a building. It's like oh yeah, we got to build a bridge, start working on that, right? Because yeah, everyone that civilization seemed to be unified. They they weren't as nearly not even close to a thousandth the divided we were, and you know the, the you know how the story goes where God looks down, it's like ah oh, crap. <laughs> they're going <Yeah>. to <laughs> make it we got to yeah. do something uh, <laughs> all right languages scatter 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 and uh-huh. you know let's hit the reset button and go from there and but there were other stories you know even before rob got into it um not to go into chapter and verse too much but the, the story of joshua you know where he asked god to hold the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day sun, so he just slay still more, a yeah slay more enemies yeah. and and i've tried to remind people i go how easy would it be to hold the sun and the moon in the sky if it was just a planetarium? You just hit pause on the sun and the moon in the sky. You don't have to mess with a whole bunch of, of physics with a solar system. You know what you happen if you had to pause a whole solar system? That'd be a nightmare. I'm not saying that God is lazy. I'm saying that God is efficient. God, you know, <laughs> it's like, look, everyone's going to buy the story. It's like, we don't have to make a solar system. Uh-huh. Um, the You know, I even the... Um, uh, uh, Christ coming back and, and all eyes will see him simultaneously. Only worse than a flat earth to where I had people arguing with me saying, no, 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 He could show up on one side and the other people could watch him on cell phones on the other. I was going, come on, man. That <laughs> stretch. I go, plus it kind of loses a bit of its impact, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> if you're watching him on your iPhone, you know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it does. It just not doesn't translate. Well. You know where they did that though? They did that in like the first ten minutes, which is one of like the greatest first ten minutes of any movie ever in Masters of the Universe. When in when they're in Eternia and Frank Langella as Skeletor is like announcing to everyone that sure. he's like taken over all of Eternia, and he's like this giant hologram head. Yeah, but like that you can see from everywhere. They cut to like all these different scenes of like the good guys. So Eternia is yeah. flat. No, no yeah, Eternia you, is for sure flat. Okay. No, if you did, everywhere's if you, flat. <laughs> if you did multiple, if you did multiple images, if you play any games, if you instanced it, sure, you could you could do multiples in the globe, but it still works. Anyway, sorry. 
Yeah. What was the initial question? Where were we? On this? <laughs> I think we were. Uh, I think we were. You, just you, you were talking started, about Rob Skiba, Tower of Babel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Christian stuff and, yeah, yeah. and um, the uh, verboten how, nature of it. Yeah, the verboten nature of it. Yeah, to to this day. But again, it was weird because I got into it, to, but I am still not invited to the flat Earth. Well, before the, at least the pandemic, um, there we had we had flat Earth Christian conferences where I wasn't invited because I didn't quote enough chapter and verse. So you can't and win either way. I couldn't win. It. And in fact, that was because at least half of our community is Christian and the other half is agnostic, for lack of a better term. Right. And so when the conferences, nobody was happy, you know, completely happy right. because you, to where the second conference, we split it between two stages. You know, you had your Christian side over here and your, mm-hmm. your agnostic side over here. Yeah. And you, there were people always complaining. I, social media was just lit up. It's like, it wasn't Christian enough. And there are other people, it's like, it's too Christian. It's like, okay, well, at least we were on the right track. We, we knew what <laughs> yeah. happened. But the yeah. media would only cover the non-Christian side. Oh, of course. Which was, which was yeah. So okay. no, no, I've done, I can't tell you how many interviews, not one of them ever brought up the clue they are hiding God. Not one. Mm, really? So, nope. Mm, that's nope, interesting. Nope. I'm telling you, where there's smoke, there's fire. The thing you can't talk about or the thing no one else will talk about is usually the only thing that matters. There you like, go. It's like the only, it's like the, the secret, you know, key to unlock the thing. But right. anyway, okay. Nick, let me, let's, uh, let's, questions? let's kick off our questions with our patrons question. Patreon okay. question. What is it? Patreon question. Uh, what, what, what do I identify as? Is it, is this a pronoun question? No, not a pronoun <laughs> question. Not a pronoun question. Right. You're good. Uh, this comes from American cars. Willing to uh, learn. And, uh, he says, uh, I have uh, I have two good friends that are snipers, including a sniper instructor. Oh, uh, I, keep... I already know where this is going, but go ahead. I, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, both keep asking me about the Coriolis effect and why they account for the spin of the earth and their spot <laughs> on in their shot. I know it has something to do with demon math. That's but I... what he calls it. And yeah, that's what he calls it. And he's oh, a okay. pattern. He actually Here, recommended it. But I can find it. the videos I watched along with my own journey. Yeah. Here's here's okay. Here's where I start. This, I've had this argument I, before too, by the way, with uh, guys. Yeah, yeah. The the Patreon question is a fair one, but I have had to deal with this one for years. First off, I shoot. Right. Nice. Probably can't tell by looking at me, but I I am a pro gun. Gun control for me is using two hands. Right. Yeah. Le- le- less than lethal. That's when you're changing mags. That's right. Hey, that's, the only that, time you take a knee is to pray and tighten up your aim, baby. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that, be, that being said, I have yet to run into a scope that is anything more than windage and elevation. Uh-huh. That's all it is. It's just a dial on top and a dial on side. I have never mm-hmm. seen a dial on the side that's for Coriolis effect. Yeah. Second, a sniper, even the best snipers, are barely shooting a mile, maybe yep. a mile. <laughs> And which is why I sent you that link. The flatter testimony shows by subject matter expert. Immediately, I had every, except for snipers, which was interesting. Every every group in the military, especially my favorite was Master Gunner from, you know, because he did tanks. And he goes, he, he comes straight out to me. He goes, do you know how hard it would be to fight any sort of battle if we had to take into account the Coriolis effect? Coriolis effect, by the way, is not the curvature of the earth. It's the spin of the earth. So you remember if you're if if the equator were spinning at a thousand miles an hour roughly, and the North Pole you're spinning at zero miles an hour because it's the center of the merry-go-round, then everything else between is you know 800, 700, 600 miles an hour. And yep. he goes, you would have to account for that. You'd have to know where you were on the battlefield. Forget about the map. You'd have to know where you were on the globe before you took any sort of long-range shot. Mm-hmm. And Everything from howitzers that are firing up are 30 miles. Torpedoes are at least 30 miles. A lot of people don't know that. Wow. Torpedoes go a long way, which is basically just underwater, but it's the same thing in the air. Yeah. Um, the, the tanks, which are usually under 10 miles, and then the missile systems, unclassified, we're talking dozens of miles, right? Yeah. He, and, and he goes, and, and every single military guy I talked to, every single one of them said the same thing. It's like, oh, no, no, we've heard about the curvature of the Earth and the Coriolis and the spin of the earth. We never factor it into the firing solutions ever, ever, ever. And, and and it's just kind of lost. It's something that's mentioned to the rookies and every rookie uh, will bring it up. Same thing with the, the, the surveyors, the surveyors, you know, the, the, the rookie surveyors will ask the veterans, you know, the grizzled veterans. It's like, so are we taking into account the curvature? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it for this time. You know, they'll just wave <laughs> them off. And then 10 years later, they forget that it was ever there. So uh-huh. any sniper 
that says uh, that says they have to account for the the spin of the Earth and or the curvature. No, the curvature of the, that's different. Elevation is elevation, right? right. That's not time for the curvature of the Earth. Eventually, you have to deal with elevation because the bullet will eventually start you know nosing down. But the curvature of the Earth, no, you're not firing anywhere near long enough to take that into account. Now, you're firing cannons that are going 30 miles. You should have to take something like that into account, or at least the spin of the Earth. Because remember, you're firing, especially with howitzers, you're taking these huge arcs, you know, yep. way, way, way up there. No one ever factors it in. No one ever, ever, again, point them straight at my testimony shows. They can listen for hours on end on how these guys all say the same damn thing. To, to but to be fair, are there some books out there? You know, that are there field manuals which will bring in some fuzzy math? Sure, they, they never ever get used ever. The guys yeah. is like, no, no, turn. <laughs> you know, distance, wind, maybe fire. Yeah. That's it. No one ever. Yeah, yeah. If you had to take into account, especially let's say you were down in um, Central America. Right, because we never do anything in Central America. No, no, no. no, no. Fire anything down. It's like we don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, CIA, they're absolutely good. By the way, Jack Ryan, love the fact that Jack. A little side note, I love the fact that Jack Ryan in both the movies and the television series is this almost a literal Boy Scout. Mm -hmm. and it's so outraged. It's like, no, sorry, CIA, Mr. President, yeah. I don't dance. Yeah, the CIA. <laughs> the in present yeah. danger. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that argument, you don't realize until you get older, you know, that argument where the one guy had, the smart guy had the 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 wave, you know, the waiver that signed by the president. Oh, yeah, you like, don't have one of these, do you, Jack? Yeah, exactly. Like, right. Yeah, and which and, and after that movie, it's like, no, that guy's getting off because he's mm -hmm. got that piece of paper. Yeah, Jack, you're going to jail. I hate to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and plus, come on, it's the freaking... Sorry, to, to get let, let me get off on one more tangent. Yeah, the Fast and the quick. Furious is just Here, a series of movies, Mark. I mean, come on. There certainly was never any gun running that happened. Uh, you know, years earlier, there's a wonderful movie called Three Days of the Condor uh, with Robert Redford. If you have never seen it, oh, my God, watch it, which it was so ahead of its time. It was like 1975, which is CIA on CIA crime. It wasn't the CIA were good guys. They were both bad guys. But what happened was uh, a little. I'll, I'll give you the preface. I won't give you the spoilers. Which was there was a CIA research group, so the the book nerds. They were just going through books, looking for codes and blah blah blah. Happened to stumble upon an op running, being run by another CIA group, and it was above these guys' pay grade. So they had the research group wiped out, <laughs> just wiped out. It's like sorry, <laughs> that happens. By the yeah. way, it's like above your pay grade, you shouldn't have stumbled into it. Eh, Time to get cracked. Yep. Yeah, you guys all got to die. And National it's like, security. That's the that's the CIA. So when when Harrison Ford gets all and granted, Harrison Ford one of his gifts is to play outraged so well. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, yeah. and and it seems so legitimate. It's like, how dare you? We're the we're America. We're the good guys. You know, we yeah. you know like, we have to do the right thing. It's like, uh -huh. we what are you talking about? It's the CIA. Is yeah, weird? it's the CIA, Jack. It, I think well, you're in the wrong business. It's like it's like okay, so the KGB. They're evil all the time. CIA, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. We Never. wear white hats. No, yeah. I mean, you know, anyway, that, that so, ambush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, militarily, though, the snipers, no, they got nothing. They got nothing. So, every time somebody sees somebody on CNN, the fact that you have snipers come on on CNN, it's like, oh, I had to take into account the curvature of the earth. And sometimes they'll bring up the spin of the earth. I got a dozen guys that fire 10 times as long saying, what? No, mm -hmm. <laughs> never. Yeah. Well, and I could see it, too, because, you know, I bet you as America and Cars coins the phrase demon math, you know, I bet you that math just kind of cancels itself out or is so fuzzy. It just doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like it it's just an it, inconsequential thing. It doesn't even when the Barrett was new, if you know that, you know, the Barrett. Oh, yeah. They're here in Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Love the Barrett. And even when that was coming out, the the, the stuff that I had read was. Somebody would initially, when they were when they were doing the testing, you know, military contract biz, they were trying to factor in the the spin of the earth, and it wasn't working. So they went back to the straight thing, and everything was fine. And now, of course, Barrett's are the, mm -hmm. the, the the thing. I took uh, I took a class uh, with Frank Galley, the Sniper's Hide, uh, which is like a precision uh, rifle class where we're shooting out to like seven hundred yards, you know. Yeah. 
not super far. In fact, we were out there yesterday with a couple Scar 17s, you know, and some ball ammo, you know, punching out the 650 and 700. And we had everything from that to 556. We even had some 300 blackout tracers, which were a lot of fun. By yeah. the way, if you've never like shot tracers, it's like a Roman candle on steroids. Nice. Yeah. It's awesome. And it was a nice wet Sounds day fun. so we could get away with it. Uh, but <clears throat> same thing, you know, whether you're running just an EOTech or an ACOG or you have some variable power, you know, 5 to 25 power, you know, telescopic SIG Tango 6, $3,000 scope. Right. All this stuff has is your reticle, which yep. is, you know, one of like three or four different variations. Sure. And then it has your elevation, your windage, and yep. then it might have your, um, uh, what is it, like your focus reticle, like diopter kind of over here, just to help tighten things up a little bit. But there's, right. but like, even with 308, the parabolic arc of 308 is like if you're dialed in at, you know, 50, you're back on it like or 25, you're back on it like 100, you right. know. And so that arc, you're never going to be able to factor no. in spin and contour of the earth while you're trying to also arc around into a target. No. You know, it's just. No. <clears throat> and, and by the way, one more thing for, for the listeners, which is don't forget the, the comparisons here, which is. If bullets have to take into account the, the the spin the spin of the earth, right? Then why don't planes? Right. Be because planes are basically just a slower moving bullet. That's all they are. In fact, when you get up to you know spy planes and, and high speed fighter planes, you're traveling faster than bullets. Yeah. So why when at what point do they have to factor in the spin of the earth and the curvature of the earth? And nobody does, especially I mean, with, there's wonderful calculations. We picked up on this immediately, which is if you're traveling even like 500, 600 miles an hour, you you will have to if you're in a commercial airline, you either have to nose down, depending on your perspective, constantly or nose up constantly, depending on which way your plane is oriented. And if you've ever flown, you know full well, there's a wonderful video. I'll, I'll see if I can link it for you where when you wake up to cruising altitude if it's a calm day your plane's not moving i mean it is tabletop freaking flat to where your water glass isn't even jiggling at all it is absolutely glass and if you know full well i mean i've flown so many times where you know full well if you're even dropping 500 feet right in, in you know like a minute you will feel it you absolutely know when your when your plane noses down noses up so why doesn't it nose down on a regular basis and why doesn't it know or nose up on a regular basis and no one no one will talk about it um there's some wonderful a wonderful graphic i picked up i'll, I'll send it to you here it's a it's a great little video where they were tracking you've seen like flight flight radars where they it's top down and you're looking at planes crossing the country and well yes. somehow i don't know who did this i don't know what group did this but they also had the data when you turned it sideways and you were looking at basically the United States from a horizontal standpoint, and they expanded it a little bit to make sure, you know, because you're only at 35,000 feet, you're only like five, five, not even 10 miles, even maxed out, not even 10 miles above, which is tiny. So they expanded it and they showed that basically the plane goes almost straight up and levels completely off and goes down. And the, all the flight paths were absolutely tabletop flat. Well, that's weird because the raw data should be curved because mm -hmm. the earth is curved and there are millions of feet of curvature from Los Angeles to New York. So why is the raw data flat? And I'm, I'm like looking at this going, wait a minute, what, how it's because the raw data is flat. You didn't, yeah. you didn't just straighten it out for the, for the program. I'll, I'll send it to you though, if I can get a chance. And also so. the, the strangely erratic flight path nature, the strangely erratic nature of flight paths well, is an interesting one. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't have this written down, but it kind of, one of the one of the things that spooked me the most i think was like nobody flies over the indian ocean like nobody mm -hmm. flies over the south pacific or antarctica yeah they don't fly anywhere near antarctica uh and you're tracking their flight path so you can go to flight tracker you can go to some mm -hmm. of these other uh sites that you know track you know mm -hmm. airlines fly and you can see the planes all over the world any time but they don't take the shortest distance between point A and point B. They seem to take the long way around to go up the coast of one continent, then right. down the coast of the other. Can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? That, oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That, was, that, that, that did was, make me think. That was recommended to me early on. Early on when I was making the clues. I hadn't even finished the clues yet by a guy in England. He's going, he goes, you want to see some weird stuff, man? He goes, look at the long-haul flights. I go, what's a long-haul flight? He goes, anything that's traveling from the southern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere meaning um, Africa to South America, South America to Australia, and so on and so on. He goes, 
the routes don't make any sense. In fact, one of my uh, subject matter experts, which uh, the corporate um, travel agent, which I'm looking at right here, which, wow, I did that back in December of 2015. The, um, uh, they said that he, they said, you don't know how lucky you are in the Northern. Most of the population is in the Northern hemisphere. We call it the inner ring, right? Mm -hmm. The inside of the map. Uh, you can get nonstop flights anywhere you want. It's just a question of when, right? Even before, mostly before the pandemic, I know routes have changed since the pandemic, but before the pandemic, you could, you could travel anywhere. Basically you want in the Northern hemisphere because in the Southern hemisphere, you can't get nonstop flights. In fact, 95% of the flights, if you're going from Southern to Southern, are multiple connection. And on top of that, where it gets even weirder is they go North, way, way North. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're going, you're bouncing off Los Angeles or Dallas and then going all the way back down yeah. to Australia. And it doesn't make sense unless you put it on a flat earth map, which is known as the AE map, otherwise known as the azimuthal equidistant map, which took me about a month to say correctly. <laughs> and um, and and then it turns. It's not this high arcing thing which doubles or triples your distance. It, I mean, the distances are still ridiculous, but it turns it into a shallow dog leg or a straight line, and it doesn't make any damn sense. In fact, there was only. And then I had to make a separate clue. I did clue seven, I think, which talked about how there were no flights. I was like looking for freaking nonstop flights in the uh, in the southern hemisphere, and there weren't any. And then so finally, like somebody found like five in the whole southern hemisphere, five nonstop flights. And I mean, we're talking five, right? In fact, there are some capital cities you can't go nonstop from, from place to place. It's like, what are you talking about? You can always find a nonstop from this area, you know, place to this place or this place, but not down there. And they, um, and, and I always bugged me when people would email me about, I finally did a clue, which, which I finally, when I said, okay, fine, you found a flight that, um, if you found some nonstop flights, but you can't prove the route. Meaning that this is the other part. There's two parts to this. The second part is, is that when, because I wanted to see where these planes were going and what happened was when these fly, pl planes were flying o over the ocean, if it got to a point where there was no other island where there was any radar next to it, the planes would blink out and the, uh, the latitude and longitude would go into estimated or approximated mode. And, yeah. it, and then it wouldn't blink back onto the screen until it got close to shore, which meant exactly what it sounds like which means when you're flying down there over the oceans like main indian ocean like i don't know those indian ocean flights that disappeared recently <laughs> uh -huh. with with flagship triple sevens because that would happen <laughs> they know approximately where you are they don't know exactly where you are mm. and and then i had people come back and said dude it's not just happening in the southern hemisphere same thing happens in the northern hemisphere i go really you go they go think about it. there's no islands between los angeles and hawaii you and so when you get off Los Angeles or San Francisco or wherever it is, if you're leaving the states, you're heading to Hawaii. You get about 150, 200 miles offshore. Blink, that's it. Your latitude and longitude are gone. You are now flying solo. You yeah. you have without a net. And then eventually, once you get within 200 miles of Hawaii, you'll blink back on, and then you can land. And everybody's been doing this for years and years, and it hasn't really been a problem until every once in a while you'll get a plane that'll go down for some reason in an ocean and you'll hear the stories. Well, oh, we can't find the black boxes. It's like, what do you mean? You can't find the black boxes. It's a freaking flagship. You uh -huh. know, it's a triple seven. You absolutely have redundant black boxes in this thing. How'd you lose it? And they don't want to talk about it mm. because it, it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be possible, but there's some things that are hidden very, very well because it's so mind blowing for some people. It's, it's the, it's the last option you would ever go to. You would never say, oh, we can't find the black boxes in the Indian Ocean for that 777 because the Earth is flat. No one's going to say that. No mm -hmm. one would even make jump to that sort of conclusion. So you just hum and ha about it and speculate all the day. Well, you, because anyone that even brings up flat Earth, just, people just get laughed out of the room. Yeah. So it's brilliant. Yeah. There are a handful of topics that will make you useless at parties, and, <laughs> which is like my great excuse now to never go to parties that I don't want to go to. And if you're ever forced you know? to, you know exactly what to say. Yeah, I know exactly what to bring up. You know, I'll tell you what uh, brought me into Flat Earth was uh, a probably Alexandra video of all things from like 2017, 2018. The, the what now? Uh, there's this girl that has this YouTube channel called Probably Alexandra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blonde, yeah. blonde girl, skinny. Needs yeah. to eat, a, eat a sandwich or two. She does yeah, need a yeah. burger. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. She needs a few. She needs, she needs Very 20, pretty. 
She needs 100 cc's of hand sandwich. Stat. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She needs. She's like the one girl on planet Earth who needs to go to McDonald's every day. I know. I, <laughs> everybody else, yeah, but her, it's like I don't know what you're eating regimen. I mean, what is it? Like, she's she has dryer lint for dinner and ice cubes for dessert or something. Like she that. does well, and she has like some medical condition, but you know whatever. Yeah. It's anyway, like so but anyway, fun. no, I I think she's great. But anyway, go ahead. No, she does, but she was the one that sort of like I think she refers to flat Earth as kind of being like the gateway drug or like the latch key to all of the things that you're not supposed to talk about yeah. you know like if once you like you talk about it being kind of a matrix thing once you kind of like take that red red pill that fe red pill all of a sudden like all the other things that you're not supposed to question antarctica genesis 6 the nephilim adrenochrome right. you know the narrative of the past few years yep. and a couple yep. of things that you're not allowed to talk mm -hmm. about you know except when you use code words like okay. all that stuff like starts to kind of unfold itself you know it yeah and that's that's because it's the biggest one it, it's not yeah. just the gateway it's it 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 cracks your head open to where everything else is possible it's the umbrella which is really really hard to open but once you open it you all of a sudden realize it's like Hey, wait a minute! <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah. All these other things, anything else you you had discounted at some point, you are now revisiting, mm -hmm. and and everybody get, does that. Which I mean, me, it's like, oh my god, I have to go back and look at all this stuff again. And on top of that, I don't even shoot. I don't shoot down any more conspiracies anymore. People think I'm joking when when it's like, oh, you know, Elvis is still alive, and and we're pretty sure he had Bigfoot's baby, right? <laughs> Uh, normally I'd be like, get out of here, man. I don't want to talk to you. And nor but now I'm like, I maybe that's yeah. right. what do you got? I'll, I'll, I'll throw it. Yeah. Throw it at me. Yeah. It and, <laughs> sure. And it, I, it'd be hypocritical for me to say anything. Otherwise it looked like I start my day with flat earth. Mm -hmm. So well, I don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, the, yeah. the only criticism I got from people was that they said that we were distracting from, from more serious conspiracies, you know, and, and we can say, you know, we can say the word 9-11, I think, where yeah. where people are saying, well, that's that's the ultimate conspiracy. And and you're 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 diminishing you know all the time and, and effort we spent over the last X number of years to to talk about this. It's like, dude, that's just some planes and some buildings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is way bigger. Yeah. Way, way physical. In fact, there's nothing other than the existence or the proof of, of other civilizations and or God, mm -hmm. there is nothing bigger than this. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah i i don't have yeah. i i can't i can't criticize anybody though yeah <laughs> um well uh i know we're a little pressed for time we probably got like another hour ish so I'm okay make sure yeah. nick gets all the stuff hit, in. hit me with whatever you got nick all right uh kind of rapid fire on questions these are just things that pop I, into my I will head try to keep them as short as i can uh yeah start with this one no what Maybe if if the earth if the earth is flat, where do seasons come from? Oh, uh, okay. So if we're living in a building, right? We're living in a uh, basically again for your listeners, we're living in a snow globe, or a pizza box, or uh, we're living in a, basically in a giant building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, right? Then everything is controlled, and nothing is left to chance. Why would you leave anything to chance? You're living in a giant planetarium. So when it comes to heating and cooling the thermal dynamics of this place it's first off we'll, we'll address the sun first if the sun and the moon are traveling above us like tiny little mobiles above a child's crib right the sun is tiny by comparison the only reason we draw it about a thousand miles wide on and on when we do illustrations is because if you drew it what we think it is like 50 miles wide you'd never see it it'd be smaller than a freaking pixel so we, we can't draw it that small so the sun is giving off some heat and it's traveling and it's not taking the same path. It's kind of like a needle on a record. And I know this dates me back in the day, kids, when we had vinyl, <laughs> yeah. the needle would go in as the song progressed. And, you know, what well, sort of, so it's sort the of old like gramophone. Oh, God. Yeah. I know. I, so it dates me so much. It's like the only people that use vinyl are DJs. And even then, <laughs> not, not so many anymore. So, but, but it's also not the only heating source. So when it comes to the energy transfer, there's a wonderful story. If you haven't seen the documentary, I highly recommend it, but I'll tell you the story really quick before we do it, before we, um, before we finish this question, which is the jet stream 
transfers huge amounts of air, right? Uh, the underwater conveyor system is the, the water system, which transfers huge amount, even more amounts of energy in water because it's dense, right? And if you want to see how that works, uh, if you've never gotten the app, please look into the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, which is yeah. absolutely fantastic. We worked on that app for a long time. I don't get a dime from it, but it shows some wonderful stuff. And Rob Skiba was the guy that figured out that when you take the Flat Earth map and look at the jet stream, everything runs in this wonderful, perfect circle through it uh, uh which could be okay. how could be some how some of the planes are traveling from one distance to the other faster mm -hmm. than what they should be because we're we, we're pretty convinced there's some tailwinds which are faster than 100 miles an hour up there that they're getting a hold of because if you can get a tailwind of 200 plus miles an hour you can go way way faster you're not technically you're not breaking the speed of sound because you know the plane's just being carried along you're just you know on a moving walkway um but what was the thing I was going to mention? Oh, okay. So there's a, I want to mention this really fast. Uh, the, it's in the documentary, but it has to do with the, the, the heat transfer in the seasons, which was uh, one of our guys back in the day, he worked for a guy that worked for NASA and he was at one of their parties out in the Hamptons and the power goes out. It was like a Christmas holiday. And of course, you know, we're down to wine and candles. So all these NASA guys are, are, you know, talking, swapping stories, you know, how that goes. And, and one <laughs> of them says, yeah, so, so Frank, I, I hear that uh, the GPS system, you know, doesn't doesn't work out in Antarctica. And it's like, hey, Fred, you know, you had to send a team down there to to confirm that. And then another guy who might as well be, you know, one of the smoking men from from X Men or, yeah, or X Files. X -Files. Back in the day. Yeah, uh -huh. that they're always smoking, right? He comes in, he goes, well, if he sends a team out that far, they're not coming back. <laughs> and you know, our one of our guys is like, why wouldn't he be coming back? It's like, is it too cold? It's like, well, because GPS doesn't work down there. There's no way to to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. And he's like, why isn't it? Why doesn't it work down there? Because it's too cold. He goes, no, because it's flat, right? Yeah. And then that same guy proceeds to take a piece of chalk, and on the granite floor, starts drawing in this wine-induced rant, and starts <laughs> drawing the world out on the floor on this granite floor. And it would have been the most wonderful movie pullout scene because by the time he was done, when you zoomed out, you were looking at the UN flag. Yes, on, the UN flag. Yep. Yeah, the UN flag on the floor. And mm -hmm. our guy, this was way before we were doing this. This was early 2000s when, when this guy saw this. And he didn't get it. He's in mid mid twenties because again, if you show flat Earth to somebody, no, of course nowadays people kind of figure out it's like. But you show somebody back then in his twenties, you draw out the, the UN flag for him, they don't think anything of it. And then years later, he's like, well, you can imagine right at home, right up. In, yeah, it's yeah. like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. What he wasn't he wasn't talking figuratively. He was uh -huh. talking literally because he was yeah. talking about the thermodynamic systems. And he, he said it basically would the circle back to the, the seasons. Everything is about energy transfer. Everything and, and the sun only is one part of it. So the seasons are basically created artificially through a number of systems, through the jet stream, through the sun, through the uh, underwater conveyor system, and yeah, even through some of the magma systems. But between that, it's just all set like a, like a, I don't know, like a pre-programmed timer. You know, yeah, it's just, like a it's like a clock hand that goes yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and you can you can set it to anything you want, but it's gauged that way. Oh yeah, and the moon has nothing to do with the tides, because why would yeah. you? Uh, I mean, if it's the moon is only fifty miles wide, why would you give this huge gravitational field? It we we would treat it no different than our simulations that we build now, which is a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> the civil is that you know the, we call it in in games that we create physics engines, mm -hmm. and when it comes to physics engines, the sky has nothing to do with the gravity. Gravity is just all created from the ground level. Yeah. It's like you drop something, it falls to the ground, and and if the tides happen to sink, now do the tides sink up with the moon? Yeah, that's because the 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 everything in the sky is just one giant heavily or, ornamented clock system that predates language. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. The moon the correlation and causation are yeah, not. The yeah, same. there's a correlation. It's like, oh hey, the moon's here, the tides here. Oh, the moon must be affecting the tides, mm -hmm. or it's not. <laughs> yeah. just, you know, you're, well, you're, it's sort of like when you're messing around with like the Unreal Engine, you know, you're and you insert the skybox. The skybox like has a day night cycle like in Red Dead Redemption, but it doesn't have anything to do with like 
there you know, you go. if you drop a rifle in the game or get off the horse, you know, it's not they're not tied together. By the but way, but they are synced up in order to create the you get you get multiple gold stars. I have done hundreds of interviews, not one person, not one. You were the very first person to ever mention the skybox system by name. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, which That's is I'm a nerd. Yeah, so, because in computer, I'm not married. Right. And I don't have kids, Mark. What can I tell you? I've never been married and had kids either. I know exactly. I'm it's Wilson, already, brother. brother. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> no, the stretch box... unite. <laughs> yeah, the skybox system is how they create the sky. Everything in the yeah. sky looks like it's curved. You can draw spheres. You can draw anything up there. It looks wonderful and spherical, but it's all angled off. Computers can't draw circles. People forget that. It's like everything That's is right. angled because you can't teach a computer to draw anything but boxes. That's why everything's pixelated. That's why everything's pixelated. Yeah. And, um, and because of that, the, the sky is just this giant rectangular box. And you simulate everything inside it to make it look like it's curved, that, which is why, you know, well, again, we'll get into it. Anyway, sorry. Next question. Go. Yeah. Well, speaking of the speaking of the sun, yeah. if it's not 93 million miles away, right, if right. it's over us going in a, you know, in a perfect circle. Right. Um, it's like, I guess this is there's two questions related to this. OK. One when it's directly over us it's one size but yeah. when it's setting and it's far away and it's moving away from us if it's it gets bigger why does it get bigger uh, when if it's moving farther away it should look smaller uh, okay well it's part of the design of this place and the media if you're a meteorologist or you know any meteorologists probably don't because they're really boring uh is that it's called atmospheric lensing so if you take it meaning there's a thickness to our atmosphere that acts like water which will change how you view things so like at right now again it's 99.9 percent .9 transparent right but at 10 miles it's like 90 percent, and then it gets 80 and 70 and 60 but it also gains a thickness to it and because of that it will distort and act like a magnifying glass and make things bigger depending again comes down to humidity barometric pressure barometric temperature pressure, yeah. and since it varies all the time people can't figure out the the connections and they can't they can't make because you know once once you start seeing the repetition once you start seeing the patterns everyone could figure it out so the, yeah. the how the system was designed was brilliant so in like some desert sequences i have seen the sun get smaller off in the distance but if the atmosphere is really really thick and uh, again the flat earth sun moon and, and zodiac clock app there's some wonderful there's a whole sun section in fact, I've got a playlist. Maybe I'll send it to you. Uh, I'll, I'll paste it in here. It's dedicated to suns. Here's really weird. If you have a special filter on your camera and you're at the beach and you're seeing the sun go off to the distance, it doesn't set. It gets to a point and then just fades away like a puff of smoke. It is mm -hmm. the coolest thing ever. But to your eyes, to your naked eyes, it looks like it's, oh, it's setting and setting. It's flattening out and it's getting all weird and distorted, but it's actually not. And if you again, if you get a filter on your camera, it'll get smaller and, and but then it'll get to a certain size and it won't get any smaller. And they'll just do this. It'll go. Oh, it'll just weird. It'll go. It'll go away. And it is. What was the initial question? Uh, oh, it, well, 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 that was actually you were talking about you were you were touching on my second question. The follow up to that was gonna be like, why does the sun look like it's setting then? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, if it everything's does. flat. In, in fact, it, that goes along with with the um, the ships going over the horizon, which is what's really changed. What the reason why the community has yeah. grown like it? I couldn't have done this twenty years ago. What's changed is HD camera technology. Yep. Back in the day when we were growing up, kids, you, you had a three thousand three thousand dollars Sony cam on your shoulder, and and everything uh -huh. looked crappy. You know, when you yep. zoomed in. Now you can get a five hundred dollar off the shelf camera and. A boat, which is gone now, right? It's like, oh, what's sail? You know, you're waving at the boat. Hey, everybody, mm -hmm. it goes off in the distance, right? Yeah, oh, no. you take your camera out, you know, zoom, it pulls it back into frame. And then you can let it go again and you can pull it back into frame again and again. And people, again, you can do this until, unless you mention flat earth, people don't get it. Yeah. It's like, look, eventually it has to be on the other side of the hill because of the curvature. And it's yeah. not anymore. And people can say refraction all day long. But if that's the case, then why do we see it with everything, including the, the sun? I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, re the reason why most people get into flat earth is because of long distance photography with HD yeah. cameras now. I didn't tell them to do it in the clues. You can look at yourself. People just start running to the beach with cameras, started shooting long distance. It's like, oh, look, that lighthouse is 50 miles away. I can see it. Uh -huh. and, and they started calling me and they're going, I can see blah, blah, blah. I'm going, and? And, and they go, yeah. well, that, that means it's flat. I go, you mean tabletop flat? And because I, I initially put out a model 
I was using um, Orlando Ferguson's model with, from the 1830s, which looked like a roulette table. He had a little, you know, it was kind of bulgy in, in the North Pole, and but it actually did like a roulette table. And people were like, no, it's tabletop flat, plus you can't use the term roulette table. And I go, why? And they go, because all the, the numbers on a roulette table add up to 666. And I go, is that true? And like, it is. It's absolutely true. Just like all the demon what math the, for the Earth. What? It's yeah, like, you oh, take all I the roulette passed, numbers. almost lost my sanctification there. Yeah, you add them up and it comes to 666. <laughs> Nick's going to have to give up another thing for Lent. Oh, oh gosh. By the way, it is also meteorologists have for years and years, and only now are they starting to figure it out, why the moon, when it comes up over the horizon, like a full moon, why it looks so huge on the hill On you know when it's next yeah, to it. Yeah. Like, oh, perspective. It's because it's next to a mountain. And why it gets, seems to get smaller when it's overhead. It's No, it's because of atmosphere lensing it's because you're looking at it through a magnifying glass if you want to have a trick there's some wonderful tricks that david weiss did on his channel uh d-i-t-r-h deep inside the rabbit hole which you can make things set depending on your camera tech so you take a, like a glass of water and and uh, like at the edge of a table and put a flashlight behind it and move that flashlight to the other end of the table yep. you can make the flashlight set even though the flashlight is still on a table uh, st has not moved it's still horizontal or uh, take go even better if you have the access uh, go to any gymnasium take a basketball on the floor put the camera right on the floor roll the ball to the other end of the floor watch what happens that ball will set depending on where you are you can do the footballs you can do the soccer fields any and yeah. forget it i mean if and if you get um to a point where you're uh you're outside and you're having to deal with heat waves off the road mm -hmm. oh yeah then then it just gets nightmarish so well and uh the perspective of objects underwater you know, like if you're trying to spearfish or if you're trying to shoot something underwater, oh, yeah. you know, or if you're just trying to grab something underwater, you know, depending on the light and where it is, it's like it's offset from where oh, it dude, is. It, you, we've all done it. I mean, take yeah. any yeah. glass of water and stick any, I don't know, a fork, a straw, whatever, yeah. into the glass of water. I mean, and then look down. It absolutely will bend yeah. everything. Uh -huh. So there you go. Let me ask, let me ask you this. Uh, we yeah. want to, we typically have our interviews when we air them, we air them in two parts and yeah. usually about an hour on each end, something like that. Uh, okay. this would be a good, this would be a good, like okay. intermission point. Would you mind if we took this two minutes sure. to, uh, pee, pee, pee <laughs> and ref refresh yeah, our no, coffees? Are you okay? If we, I'm yeah. just going to leave a recording. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we should be able to do all that in two minutes. Oh yeah. And then we'll come back. Cause I still got, I still got, uh, it depends. I have the world uh, record of like four, a four or five questions five still, seconds worth and he's of got some. So. so we got plenty of stuff still that we want to ask you, but our okay. eyes are floating and we, <laughs> and we need to, are you good yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Is, is go that ahead. okay? Cool. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back. Buddy. All right. BRB. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn our camera off here and when it comes back on, we'll be ready to roll. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, my uh, Keurig uh, is in need of a refresh. Um, needs to be, well, cleaned, but refreshed, replaced. And so it takes <laughs> forever to pour a single cup of coffee. Okay. Uh, but uh, so, so sorry to keep you waiting. No, 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 it's fine. Fine, fine, fine. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a really interesting. Yeah, it was the, the whole, like the, the moon in particular. Yeah looks way closer than what it's what i'm told then 200 and we'll just round up to 240,000 miles yeah yeah it looks like oh, it's just and right by there. the way that also leads into the um you're still recording right oh yeah yeah, yeah. um it leads into the artemis project you know the the moon 2.0 yeah. project yeah which yeah. is the footage that that was beamed back from artemis was was horrible in fact we we comment it's like look we can shoot with leads to your question it's like why can we shoot better footage from here of the mm. moon than what you were delivering at point blank range yeah and not only that i'm still i'm still blown away which you know why the general public does not pick up on this which was days and days of footage from artemis and not a single star in space not one we right. could shoot the moon with stars all day long, but you're telling me, but when you get up into space and, and I know that you could use the excuse from Apollo that you could use exposure settings as an, as an excuse why there were no stars from, from any of the Apollo missions, 
that's fine. That's ex that's actual film. <laughs> now everything's digital and everybody's got cameras that rival what Predator had, right? <laughs> with <multiple, laughs> right. with I'm not kidding. With multiple filters. In fact, we have a we have a Predator Vision video on our channel, which was someone was doing the the moon temperature thing, and because the because the moon generates a cold light, which is a whole other thing. Um, and you're saying so the Artemis project, nobody wanted to change the filters at all or the contrast or whatever. You're just never going to show stars in space. And the reason why is even now they're scared to death of screwing up the rendering, meaning the, the stars have to be remember everything's time and date stamped have to be in a certain place at a certain time. So the belt of Orion has to be there at this particular time and place. And if it is not. Well, then you get a problem. Then you got nerds that are going to, you know, at 3 a.m. in their underwear in, in Nebraska are going to be like, oh, wait, where are you guys? In Tennessee. You're good. Oh, okay. You're yeah. Fine, right? yeah. In Nebraska, yeah. they are going, hey, that's not right. I should post something about that. And then it's <laughs> over. So, yeah, it just blows me away that, that Artemis has got away with what they did. Now, granted, it was unmanned. So you could get away with it, but yeah, I can't wait to see what happens when they try to put people in that thing and try to fake the, the moon mission. I just can't wait. Mm -hmm. We're going to destroy it. <laughs> destroy it. Anyway, go on. What do you got? So my next question is, where are all of these SpaceX satellites going? <clears throat> okay. Um, first, first things first, when it comes to satellites, most of them are suspended by, it's going to sound weird, suspended by balloons. Mm -hmm. which is NASA is the largest producer and consumer of helium in the world. A lot of people don't know that. This is not secret information, by the way. You can, and they've been launching, the high-altitude balloon projects by NASA have been launching since the 50s. Go figure, since NASA was created in 1959. And they can launch payloads of upwards of four tons and keep them up there for a very, very long time. And as you, as you know, recently, we had to deal with that whole balloon incident which is which i love the fact that people are just like wait there are satellites on balloons that helped us in so many ways because there's so yep. many it's like there's no satellites on balloons it's like it thank you just like a thank satellite. you for mentioning that because when we saw the close-up yeah. of the balloon in yeah. the air and the thing that was attached to it yeah it looked peculiar exactly it looked like, like a ISS. satellite uh -huh. yeah yeah, like yeah. the international space station up there. Yeah. You could, yeah it looked like that too no i'm not saying i believe I'm I'm just, just, yeah, I, got you. I don't can, let's not get carried away if you can put up and there's the videos on my channel showing it because there was a famous one where a four ton satellite that caught a crosswind and just took out a couple suvs on the way out i'm pretty sure it was damaged before it went up and they had to hmm. make it come down but if you can launch a satellite that's eight thousand pounds right with a balloon why would you need rockets mm. well it's not cost effective i mean i mean balloons are pennies on the freaking dollar compared so, to jet and the 400,000 sidewinder missiles the $400,000 sidewinder missiles you just shoot them down well yeah there's, yeah, there's that so yeah, is yeah. there oh, sir, go, oh, ahead. go ahead well, go ahead. well so like is there a difference in gravity between way up there where satellites are supposed to be you know self suspended in orbit and here uh, it's there there's some debate on that so the question is let, let's get into the gravity gravity versus density right do I, but and I disagree with some people. It's kind of like there's some people in our community, it's like dome or no dome, right? And the, most of our people believe in dome, but there's like 20, 30 percent that actually don't believe in a dome because they don't want to be all fenced in, man, be all kept and bring down, <laughs> whatever. It's usually the artistic community, it just drives me nuts. It's like, why are you confining us, man? It's uh -huh. like, come on, not harsh, <laughs> not harsh on your, not harshing on your mellow, man. Yeah, I'm not You're dirty hippies. <laughs> yeah, I know, freaking dirty hippies. Freaking hate hippies. Like, Me and eat, Cartman and you. Go eat some patchouli. So, um, <laughs> no, no. It, so, when it comes to gravity, do I believe in gravity? Yes, I do. Um, and that is because even though there's density, and the argument there is if you take any ball, volleyball, beach ball, and you put it underneath the water and you let it go, it pops back up. Why? Was the ball defeating gravity? No, it's because it was less dense than the water that was around it. Um, you can do that with anything. A helium balloon technically is less dense and so it rises right however if you put things in a vacuum they still fall so there's got to be something there now what i love about the whole gravity argument is science can't tell you neil neil tyson the world's most famous scientist currently living 
We're not going to talk about the old guys. We'll talk about the, the, the there's three media scientists in the world, by the way. The only three guys they put on camera. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson from America, Brian Cox from, from the United States, or sorry, from England, and Michi Okaku from Japan. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Bill Nye does not count. He's got a bachelor's degree in mechanical. He became an actor in Seattle. I know I'm from Seattle. I know he's not a scientist. It. He's yeah. not a scientist. Not, right. not even close. Yeah. But he looks the part. And I love the fact I've talked to producers. I go, why do you keep putting Neil on freaking television? He's like, because he looks like a scientist. You did a great video about the lab coat. <laughs> it was true. Thank you. Thank you for that, by the yeah. way. But it was true, which is, and we've done it. I, I, we've, we in our uh, some of our LA groups, they will go down to corners in Los Angeles wearing lab coats and carrying clipboards, and people will talk to them all day long. Won't harass them at all because if you're wearing the coat, you're immediately more credible. You're wearing the coat, you're obviously more intelligent than me. So we lived just south of Nashville, and a couple months ago, just to tie into that, I yeah. took my family again. We went down to the uh, U.S. Space and Rocket Center in uh, Huntsville which sure. is about maybe an hour and a half from where we live. And it's cool. We got all the rockets there and all the exhibits and everything. And during that day that we were down there, they had some ex-astronauts and uh, old retired NASA employees hmm. standing in front of the Saturn rocket, talking to people and telling them about, you know, hey, I was on the space shuttle. I worked in Mission Command and telling, yeah. you know, just sharing stories with the public that day. The yeah. space shuttle, also known as Deep Sea. Well, One. here's the thing. Here's okay. the thing. All of those astronauts and retired NASA employees were wearing yeah. lab coats <laughs> they were all the way, wearing yeah, lab coats and i'm like wait a minute why are you wearing lab coats you weren't wearing them when you were working for nasa yeah why are you wearing them now it's the code of credibility um the code nasa of credibility. is people forget that nasa was built on the still burning embers of the nazi war machine right i mean they they were nazi Operation scientists Werner Bra von braun normally isn't it weird about war you can you can be a war criminal unless you're really intelligent. Then you're an asset. Yeah. Then you're then you're hired. Yeah. Then it's like oh no 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 you're working for us now. And it's like you it's like oh no no war crimes no no you can hang and shoot those people they're they're, they're fine. Yeah. You guys though we're gonna put you in lab coats and yeah. you're gonna work for our stuff and you're hell we'll give you redemption. Wrong. Come work for America. <laughs> Werner von Braun, there you go, which I love. You know, Soviets got half, we got half. Mm -hmm. Um, NASA is DOD the entire the entire way. They yes, they don't shoot guns, they smile for the camera, they wear white. Yeah. Um, but Werner von Braun, if you didn't catch that in the clues, which I loved, uh, it was one of my little gems that I found, was that his headstone, his gravesite, which I thought again would have been this towering cement thing with a rocket behind him, him pointing to the stars. No, no, it's this little headstone, the year he was born and the year he died, and a Bible verse, which said yep. Psalms 19.1. I didn't know what Psalms I had to look it up. Psalms 19.1, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Why would the founder of NASA be talking about a dome above the earth on his grave? Why? Mm -hmm. and there's no reason for that to happen. None. None whatsoever. And mm. those, those little things he slipped in there, which, you know, he knew he knew the real deal, but he was willing to... To, to go along with it so mm -hmm. anyway well especially yeah. after they were uh shooting uh nuclear nuclear missiles up at the front oh yeah, yeah 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 the, yeah the other thing which again secret secret stuff which wasn't so secret you know you could look it up the high altitude atomic weapons program which again yeah. it's so us it's so guy it's a guy thing to do it's like you find a barrier right what's the first thing you get get the cannon Right? Yeah, <laughs> the first thing you're gonna do, you're just gonna start shooting at Super it. Like, break it, and and then you're then it goes into what is that? Uh, the fifth element. It's like what, what, what we got bigger than blah blah blah, right? Yeah. Because then you start you start firing um the first three shots that they use. Their first three aerial shots were low megaton, and this was back when megaton was a pricey option, right? Mm -hmm. Megatons was wasn't something you could pick up the Seven Eleven. Megaton was a really really expensive thing to do and the first three shots if you can't break through something with megaton well that's it then, then you're not getting through it not not with that and so everything after that was medium kiloton you know in the 50 to 200 kiloton range and, and i knew exactly what they were doing they were painting the sky they were basically using atomic weapons as paintballs yeah. trying to map out it's like all right how big is this thing because yeah. we're militarizing space which they did immediately after those first three shots and then they're like, okay, because we need to we need to figure out how high the rockets can go before we need to start arcing them over, mm -hmm. so that we don't, so run don't hit it. it. Yeah, and and then you militarize space. People say, well, you know, why did it take so long for private companies to get involved? You know, like Blue Horizon or Virgin Galactic or, or SpaceX. Um, 
And that is because you want to control those industries as much as possible. You can't, people forget that NASA is a collection of parts, right? NASA doesn't build their stuff. It's, they get all their parts from Lockheed Martin and Boeing and General Dynamics and, and all those guys. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want Boeing teaming up with somebody later and doing their own thing. You don't want Boeing and Frito Lay getting together. It's like we're gonna put Doritos logo on the moon. You know, <laughs> you don't want that to happen because all of a sudden those rockets start crashing. And it's like, what's wrong? What are we doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And then you know, you have you have questions. And yeah, you don't want that. So what else you got? It's a great question. So if it, it, I'm just trying to organize my thoughts here, yeah. In the exclusive segment, we yes. were briefly talking about you know a long list of very recognizable, famous people, celebrities, so forth. Yeah, that are either closet or public flat earth folks. Right. Uh, if if you're right and if satellites stay up there with the help of balloons, then yeah. Elon Musk would have to be in on it, right? <sighs> he'd have no, to be. A, he'd have to, no, he'd no, have to no. understand for, or does he not? The, understand? You don't. There's certain people you don't. OK, compartmentalization, which is you know, a military protocol type thing, which is you, it's need to know. So you only let the people know that absolutely have to know. So the Apollo astronauts, they, I believe were told, not only are you going to fake it, but here's why. And they all turned into freaking basket cases. You know, yeah. they drank and they didn't do anything. So nowadays they treat them like spies, which is, and we'll get to the Elon part in a second. So a spy, for example, you, you know, you've seen the movie. It's like, okay, spy, you're going to go to this hotel. You're going to open up this bathroom window, the, the guns in the bathtub. You're going to shoot this guy coming out of this limo across the street at this particular, you know, time. That's all you get to know. You shoot it, you drop the gun, you leave. We'll clean up the hotel room. You don't get to know the backstory. You don't get to know the political intrigue. They don't care. It's above your pay grade. So when people say, not even Elon Musk, let's use um, Neil Tyson. Right. Does Neil Tyson have to know? No, no. If it was me. And again, I'm going to treat it um, like I'm wearing a black hat. I, I like putting myself in their shoes, okay. which is if I was a black hat. No, you want Neil doing exactly what he, you want him acting as naturally as possible, because people can kind of pick up on the BS. There's some people that have BS meters that are better than others. You want Neil up on stage doing his snappy song and dance. You know, he's basically just a science jack in the box, which is like <laughs> he part of the space is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. He doesn't debate. He doesn't do any of that crap. He's got great stage presence and he's perfect for what he does. I don't even know who, who would replace him if he died. Mm -hmm. So Elon Musk, same sort of thing. He is a freaking government tool. That's all he is. I mean, again, most Americans don't even know he's South African. It's like, oh no, he's, I've had I, my own brother-in-law. He's like, oh no, he's a genius. He's absolutely, always one. he's, it's like, and the media was very good in that they create, they turn, try to turn him into Tony Stark. Yep. And for, for lack of a better, he, they almost, he basically it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, for God's sake, he did a cameo in Iron Man too. Don't think that was an accident. You know, he was, he was there in the French Riviera during that whole, what was uh -huh. monitor of the French Riviera, the, the whole speed race thing. He was there in the restaurant. Yep. yep. And, you don't need him to know anything. Sorry, I've got a pet peeve. I wrote a whole chapter on him in, in my <laughs> one of my books, which was he is a he is a complete and total fraud. He everything he says, they they let him make outlandish claims because he's a billionaire. And if you're a billionaire, you've automatically got street cred. So therefore, because he obviously knows more than me, he's got a freaking billion dollars. Right. And, but everything he he did, everything he said he was gonna do, he never ever did. And I just kept calling him out on it. It's like he got on my, my radar when he said that, oh, in 2017, when he said, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to send two tourists around the moon at the middle of 2018. And I'm looking at my calendar going, wait, what sort of timeline is this? You don't have a rocket. You don't have a capsule. You don't have a crew. You're going to do this in 18 months. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to I'm going to so solve the Puerto Rico power problem after the hurricane with my special solar things. No, I'm going to save those kids with my special in the cave with my special super submarine. No, mm -hmm. I'm going to do an underground bullet train from Los Angeles, San Francisco. No, I'm going to do a, a special plane that's going to go from um, United States to China in two hours and cost like as much as a, a coach ticket. No, this is on and on and on. So. When he, and and the Tesla Roadster in space, that was that was the 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 big thing for me. If you remember the the little I do, yeah, talk about that. The the convertible in space, which was I remember was I was living in Canada when that thing came out. Somebody sent me a, a, a screenshot from it, 
And I, and I thought, it's like, who did this? I go, Jared, do this. I go, well, I go who photoshopped this, right? And, and they go, they go, no, man, that's a live feed link. And I'm going, what? <laughs> it's like, it, it can't be. You, there's no live, there's no roadster freaking hover error in space. Mm -hmm. So I click on this thing and I'm looking, I'm just going, how is this possible? I go, I go, first off, there's everything about it. Phys physics was wrong. You got, you got these massive temperature swings, supposedly in space, right? 250 above, 250 below. I go, the windows would have spider webbed. The front window would have cracked. The, um, uh, the tires would have detonated because the okay. pressure difference, you know, vacuum, they would have blown up. The fiberglass would have been shredded. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the, the everything would have just been and thing was absolutely pristine and it had three perfect HD cameras in, in position. And the, you know, it's it's doing this spinning thing as it's going around the world. I was going, what in the and what you know what got me though? It wasn't it wasn't the physics, it was the lack of branding. It was like they were nervous to do it. You you look it up if you get a chance. There isn't a single logo on it. Remember, it's a public company really? and a private company. That thing should have looked like NASCAR. You guys yeah, know, yeah. I know where you guys live. You know what NASCAR is. That thing oh, should yeah. be wall to wall endorsements, right? Yeah. And there wasn't a single logo. It's like, are you kidding? Put a giant Tesla thing on one side, a giant <laughs> SpaceX on that. Even the mannequin didn't have any logos on it. Yeah. And then I then I thought, wait a minute, why are you using the convertible? Your flagship is the S model. I go, just put an S model in there and set the cameras inside the car. In fact, you could have put the four seats, you could have subcontracted those out to Disney. I well, uh Mickey Mouse and Luke Skywalker and you oh, know. no 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 make it easy on yourself make uh, Stormtrooper Boba Fett uh -huh. Groot and Iron Man because they own all four of them Disney <laughs> does and it would think would have paid for itself no none of that and then all of a sudden after they're spinning around they're going oh we're gonna send it to Mars now and we're gonna turn off the camera because because why well because we're out of battery good night everybody and they just and that was it they cut transmission it's like you had crystal clear transmission you're not even gonna you're not even going to attempt yeah just let it ride. Yeah. 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 Just let this let sucker go. Let the thing yeah. static out. No, no, we're not gonna do it. And I even I I talked to producers and I said, look, you know, this thing's absolutely crap. Sort of like the the Red Bull jump. Uh, I'll use the Red Bull jump as another example, real fast, which is um the Red Bull jump. I you know, the, the curvature on the outside was just ridiculous. You know, it didn't make any sense. It's like you saw the whole world is the size of Arizona, you know, because he's only at 130,000 feet. I, I asked producers, I go, why are you using this shot? And they go, because it's a good shot. I go, but it's not real. You know, it's not even remotely physically accurate. They go, yeah, it's not, but it's a good <laughs> shot. And I go, and it leads into what you can apply to many, many things. And I'll get to your next question. That, but I want to end this part with this, which is there's a Mark Twain quote, which haunts me to this day because he's so right. And I do it myself, but I, I get it, which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yep. Meaning... If the power of editing, the power of producers, the, sometimes the truth is just boring and bland and you got to spice it up a bit. Yep. And when it comes in, and that applies to the news as well. Yeah. The, the news is, I mean, some countries don't care. If you up in Canada, I lived a year in Canada. The news is really, really boring up there. They don't care. Americans, we want our money's worth. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you know, if it bleeds, it yeah. leads down here and we yeah, will, yeah. We will yeah. hype up the news. This and that story means... brought to you by Charmin toilet paper and honey bunches of oats, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Or, and, and hell, one more real quick. If you guys are NFL fans, uh, even now to this day, uh, uh, the, the Oliver Stone movie, uh, one of his last. Oh, action... any given Sunday, any given Sunday. Dude, I, right? I couldn't care less about sports. I love any given Sunday. That is such an it's amazing a great movie. movie. That movie line, will make you care about sports, by the way. The line in there, which got me to this day, which is, um, which I still apply to anyone that talks about the NFL. I go, when, when Al Pacino is sitting there at the bar and he goes, the day they introduced the TV timeouts is when the game changed forever. Yep. Because it, they quietly, without any fanfare, it meant the corporations controlled the game now, not the coaches. Yeah. And if corporations control the game, that means they control the game. They can and the first rule, the, the first rule of entertainment is give the people what they want. Nobody yep. wants blowouts, they want overtimes, they want mm -hmm. their particular Bread sports service, stars. baby. Oh man. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I ramble. Good. That's all right. No, that was great. Way. Yeah, that the was awesome. awesome. Um, I have okay, I have two questions left. The, the, the first one is gonna be pretty easy, and the second one, you know, I want to leave a little more room for a broader answer because I think it's the most important question of okay of all um talk a little bit about in this model <clears throat> this flat earth model yeah what are meteors you know where do they come from how do they fall why do they fall yeah 
No, no, it's a good one. And that was one of the first questions I ever got back in 2015. And my co-host of the show, of the was podcast I was doing at the time, he came up with actually a pretty good answer, which was, he goes, well, if he goes, if the whole thing's artificial, then meteors are artificial too. He goes, it's no different than throwing a, a little pebble into an aquarium. And I go, and, and I go, flesh that out a bit. And he goes, well, think about it. He goes, what would it take to, to create meters? Most of them don't land anyway, which we'll get to in a second. So all you'd, most of them are just a light show, but some of them you'd have to actually make somewhat real. So, you know, it, you know, introduce some sort of metallic ore, whatever it is with railgun technology, high speed, make sure it doesn't aim at any cities, which is weird, right? It's never going to hit a populated area and that's it. Let the atmosphere do the rest. Maybe it'll burn up, which is why that thing in the Soviet Union or Russia a couple of years back got really close and yeah. it detonated over a populated yeah. area. Yeah, that wasn't very fun. But what I thought was interesting was I go, yeah, I like that. I, I think that's that's good. That's how I would do it. And what what I wanted to throw in though was, isn't it interesting that even though there are what is it now? I think we're at about six billion, six point six point three billion smartphones out there. There's no videos of a meteor landing anywhere. Not talking about yeah. craters. Craters are one thing. You can see craters all day long. There's a big crater in Arizona. I can drive you to, but actual something where it, and you know, don't give me a shooting star where it's like oh there it is there it is there it is okay fine drive out there and show me where it hit okay you would think remember if, if the world is mostly water that you'd have some sort of fishing boat hit you know tracking something it's like oh here it comes you know and it makes a big splash and you never you never ever see you never even hear a rumor of it but it's yeah. like you'd think that something you know hit the water even the size of a Volkswagen at I don't know a couple thousand miles an hour would make a hell of a splash, mm -hmm. but it never ever does. So when it comes to meteors, I th the short answer is I think they're artificial and I think they are very carefully placed to mm -hmm. where you don't get to see them because that might give away some of the some of the mystery, some of the about. magic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And again, yeah. We, we have set, we have billions of people supposedly running around. Nothing even comes close to them. Find me a story of somebody getting killed by a meteor. People get hit by lightning yes. every year, every, all the time, but uh, but not not meteors. Nope. Yeah, nope, nope. except yeah, in the know. movies, which movies are amazingly good at subliminal uh, stuff. You know, feeding into your head. Yeah, uh -huh. that's true. Yeah, that's true. and programming ahead of time. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, get me started there. <laughs> By the way, you, since you guys know, you, if you watch any show, even going from all the way back to the 80s, and I am hyper aware of it now, every program and every movie, every television show, every movie that doesn't have anything directly to do with space, you will find globes in the background in different yeah. places for no apparent reason. I don't, I'm not talking about the globes in the corner of a classroom. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about a globe on the top of a detective's office in Chicago. Mm -hmm. that looks like it's been there for a long time or the globe in this doctor's office the globe in this billionaire's mm -hmm. office and they're always in frame it's not like it's just a glancing thing where it's like oh okay there or there was for yeah. half a second oh no no it's behind him while he's talking uh -huh. there's no reason for it to be there and most people again they, they'd never notice it in a million years and it it occurred to me because there was a, this one little short i can't remember the video where uh, any producer will tell you you can walk in to any show with money in hand and donate money to the show, right? You can walk into any television show, say, hey, I'd like to donate $10,000 to your show. And they'll say, what do you want for it, right? Do you want an executive producer credit? What, you know, because that's a minimum of 50 or whatever it is. And they'll, and all you have to do is say, no, I want to, you know, because I'm an art, I'm an artist or whatever. I want to, I want to put a couple pieces and help set design this seemingly random room that doesn't have anything to do with car chases or anything like that. And, and they'll take your money. They'll absolutely be like, oh, okay, sure. If you do that with, you know, with silent producers in the background, you can do so much damage because all you have to do is introduce yeah. various colored globes. You can have a whole van of freaking globes for any situation. No one will question you on it. It's like, oh yeah, we'll take your 20 grand. And yeah. if the show, the show's a flop, no big deal. But if this show gets stuck on a cabinet somewhere, right? And that show runs for six years. Oh, that is a huge return on investment. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. What's your next question? Great, great, great answer. I was trying to look it up, but I'm I'm pretty sure like I would love to do a deep dive on like John Hughes movies or like anytime like the son comes in to talk to the father, you know, in the study. 
and get the get the fatherly you know sage advice you know guarantee there's probably a globe oh yeah yeah you'd be amazed right, right over his shoulder i'm sure yeah. you know it's every saying, modern you just gotta I'm, love everybody son and i see it every single time now i mean i'm so it's so i'm so hyper aware of it it's like mm -hmm. there it is and it's like and <laughs> yeah it's well in a room that it shouldn't it, it has no business being in it's it completely has no out of context there, but it's such a bland room it's like it's like somebody's study where there you know there's going to be some dialogue and you know it's going to mm -hmm. be there's going to be dialogue there every episode yeah and so why what again think about it if you're a producer why wouldn't you you know if you're running a show you'd take the money and yeah. it's like mm -hmm. and, and in fact you wouldn't even notice the change that they made to the room you'd come in there Dude. you'd have your set design person come in there it's like hey it looks fine to me Oh, you wouldn't, it. yeah, you wouldn't notice it if it were there or if it were gone. It's so subliminal. Because That's really awesome. They indoctrinate yeah. you with it growing up. The yeah, second yeah. you get to kindergarten, there's so the room. we do uh, we do a pizza movie night every Friday night, me and my kids. Yeah. And now I'm going to be like, hey, kids, let me know when you see a globe. <laughs> Please, please and I, I bet I will notice. I bet there, yeah, I bet there's going to be a globe in every flick we watch. Movie you will. Forward. You you you. And wait. Uh, I'm going to be keeping a counter. I'm one for one. I'm two, especially two, television. Three. That'll be shows. interesting. Yeah, especially television shows because <clears throat> television shows run every week. Yeah, and again, it's a cheap because remember, once you do it, once you spend you know the twenty grand for consistency and continuity, like say, let's say you give them twenty grand, right, to to do a thing, and right? You have to have continuity across seasons. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. not gonna you don't have to pay twenty grand the next year or the year after that. That mm -hmm. room chain stays the same. It's always there, and all you did was you don't. In fact, you make it easy on them. It's like yeah, don't even make me an executive producer. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be a silent producer. You just acknowledge that I donated this sort of money for tax reasons, blah, blah, blah. Be like, yeah, sure. Again, whole entertainment, they will take your money. Always. Always yeah. they will take your money. They will never say, nope, sorry. And I've, the only time I've even questioned is when the color palette was wrong. So you're not going to see a blue and brown globe in everything. Sometimes it'll be bl darker black. Sometimes it'll be gold. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've even seen white in some cases because they want the palettes to you know sometimes you'll get a set design because it's like no that clashes yeah yeah you know what i'm getting at anyway yeah. so what, what else you got so last question my last question okay why does or should it matter that the world be flat oh you mean who cares I mean, yeah. Why, why, why should it why, matter why, to someone who's matter? curious you know, about this, like theological implications? Why does it matter? It doesn't. Good night, everybody. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's a wrap. Roll credits. <laughs> that was a really, really great show. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Goodbye. Whoa. Yeah. Losing signal here. <laughs> then it goes a dial tone. <laughs> Coriolis effect. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. It doesn't matter until you start believing it and that's it's not a cop-out answer meaning it's kind of like trying to tell somebody after they've turned the age of 30 that they're adopted until they start believing it it means nothing to them right uh and then once the second you start it's like no no, no i'm pretty sure you're adopted i got some files here i got a case of stuff i got some eyewitnesses blah 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 and you can keep throwing this out and then all of a sudden they have this moment of doubt right this one little moment and it sneaks in and then all of a sudden it ripples in time backwards you know to, to it's like yeah. wait a minute wait the a minute. epiphany moment happens yeah. in the movie where it's like who, oh all the things that i yeah who were those other people was i in a basket uh -huh. you know and, you know that sort of stuff is like, <laughs> there an orphanage you know and then all of a sudden was, was i bruce wayne it, it's weird right or no was i penguin so um or, or every penguin, other penguin moses cobblepot yeah, yeah, you know okay. whichever penguin. so <laughs> but it but it kind of goes with 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 flat earth in that because people say well so what if it's flat earth i you know i still have to go to my crappy job in the morning and my kids don't <laughs> listen to me and my wife hates me and blah 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 and it's like it's like yeah you can say that all you want but the second you start believing it everything changes it's kind of like uh can we swear on the show a it's, little bit it's, it's like okay. a pg-13 oh, okay. show yeah it, it, well, you've heard you've heard the same you know um everything's well i'll use the boxing reference i won't swear um everybody's got a plan until they get hit uh-huh yeah and that is you can you can bad mouth and talk smack about flat earth all day long but the second it starts clicking in your head you are in real real trouble because then all of a sudden your perspective changes yes. so the first thing it does is okay the, the first thing it's like oh, why should it matter 
well, let, let's give you the, the the broad strokes real fast, which is the um, why not tell everybody? There, there, there's one of them. It's like why not tell it? Why why not if you don't if you find out in 1960 if the government figures out in 1960 why don't you tell people? It's like well okay. There's three big reasons, right? And so you imagine the big X Files smoking man table. Everybody sitting around there smoking and talking like Batman. And it's like, why don't we tell anybody? Hey, and then somebody says, well, okay. First thing, somebody like me <laughs> sitting on the table. It's like, all right, I got a couple ideas for you. Uh, first is every library and every university in every country has to be retooled from the ground up. And by that, I mean, astro astronomy and astrophysics, those are gutted for no, for how long? We don't know. And then your remaining physical sciences, I don't know, geology, hydrology, uh, archaeology, anything with anology, mm -hmm. those have to be rebuilt. Libraries have to be emptied yeah. and then rebuilt because you don't, because it means so many weird things. That's just academia, right? Economics, you would have to suspend world markets, all of them, for months because you don't know the, I mean, the impact. I mean, come on. The, the, the markets are so twitchy on everything that if you did something like this, there'd be some markets that would collapse, others would rise. It'd be, it'd be a nightmare. Yeah. <clears throat> but the big thing would be um, the, the religious aspect of it, which is you're giving the five major religious houses of this world, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, all five of them leverage against science simultaneously. And you're also asking them to show restraint. Yeah. Oh, good luck. After they've been beating them over, the, you know, science has been beating yes. people over the head with textbooks for five centuries, at least. Mm -hmm. right. That's not going to go well. And then the 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 questions are never going to stop. It's like you can imagine, right? You know, some theologians, they'll be like, so science, you were wrong about something <laughs> really, really important. Uh -huh. Let's let's start revisiting some of this other stuff. Like, I don't know, evolution, carbon uh -huh. dating. Uh -huh. The Big Bang, Dark Matter. You know what? Let's just. When does life begin and when is it okay to terminate it? Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. I mean, you, yeah. it, it, it would never end. Science would never be able to recover. What's sex but and what's gender? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> is yeah, one of those it, maybe not real? It, it yeah. would be. It would be a nightmare, a Pandora's box they could not close. That's uh, and true. so, the, but the short version is if civilization, because remember, our best and brightest didn't figure this out until about 1960. We suspected. But until you know for sure, you don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of like the, um, uh, again, how everything gets real. Detectives will tell you that um, wives, when they're trying to figure out if, they're, if their husbands are cheating, are in complete denial until it happens. <clears throat> right? It's like he's not, he's not, oh, there are the pictures. Damn it, he is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the, yeah. that's, so in this case, if you don't figure this out, if our best and brightest suspect, but don't figure it out until 1960, the short version is civilization's already been built. The cement is already hardened. Yeah. We can't change this now. We've got yeah. total control over this thing. Oh, we're going to keep this a secret for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? To Back to your question, though. Does it matter to the common man? Yes, it does. Uh, the big, the biggest reason for me and from what I've heard from other people is that it changes the nature of the universe. So you are not this afterthought. You are not right. a residue of the Big Bang yeah. that is floating through space in multiple impossible directions covered. And it's tiny little rock covered with a tiny bit of water and even a less amount of air gas around it. And you could be snuffed out by any number of things at any given time and that you are a complete accident. Mm -hmm. If you are living in a building, a structure. That means it was created, which means it was created by a creator, which makes things way, way easier and mo much more intimate. You are here for a reason. You are in this place for a reason. Do you get to find out the reason right away? No, of course not. But that's yes. part of the journey. So I like that. So, so there you go. It's it is we're. It doesn't matter until you believe it, but when you believe it, it changes everything. You, you I mean, you are filled with some, uh, a sense of peace, a sense of purpose. I have talked to many, many people, uh, many people that have said that they fell away from the church, me being one of them. I mean, I was into IT and tech support. I played video games for a living and I was into all, everything that was science, right? I collected antique globes, not kidding. You know, I had globes all over. They are place. cool. Yeah, I mean, they I don't cool. it. it's, a cool, yeah. it's a cool, cool icon. But yeah. when I got into this, or an idol, perhaps. But there you go. It took it took people from 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 what I've heard. They they said they were ninety five percent sure about God. Now they're ninety eight percent. You're saying, yep. well, that three percent isn't much of a swing. Well, it is. It's a it's a big swing. Does 
because if at bare minimum the structure if you are living in a, in a structure then it was built and if it was built then you can only go one of two directions it's either built by an older civilization that's more powerful than ourselves or the divine and really at that point you're kind of splitting hairs either way whoever built this place is one step closer to knowing god's phone number than you yes and that mm -hmm. gives that gives people a lot of comfort yeah and so again i've i've run into i mean for me uh the my spiritual journey has come full circle where now i it's like no 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 i will never you know i'm i'm will never question god again yeah. ever so there you go yeah that's amen great. that's great mark Sargent nailing it <laughs> that's awesome i love it <laughs> it's so true man because you know like once you start once you start understanding the deception you know and nick yes. and i often talk about what we consider the great deception to be sure. nick seems to be more along the lines that uh alien disclosure is going to be the great deception and that's a good one i tend to think more the heliocentric globe earth model is the great deception you could, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could split a ham sandwich over which one of those is, you know, more accurate. Well, what I mean, the the globe it seems to be, you know, the biggest one. If everybody was fooled by it, and mm -hmm. they were, I mean, the exception of you know a, a tiny percentage of one percent, yeah, then there seems like the 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 big one to me. Now, could you do a project blue beam later and create another deception on top of it? Sure, mm -hmm. but. I, for me, the great deception is this because it fooled everybody into where they live. Yeah. You know, the, the, the Truman Show reference, uh, which I mentioned in the documentary, uh, stealing from the movie from 1998, mm -hmm. which is, we believe the world that is presented to us. And if we are, you are presented a lie constantly, it's not, it's a great deception. People think the great deception has to be something new and like in your face now. It's like, it's oh, it just happened two hours ago because it's great. No, a great deception is something that's so large that not only did you fall for it, it was your, your parents and their parents and their parents and their parents going back generation after generation. You didn't have a chance. You were yeah. born into it. You know, you could wake up and ask your great grandfather, hey, you know, what about this flat earth? And it's like, no, nope, not flat, you know, for whatever reasons. So for me, the great deception is, is, well, it's the most likely candidate we have right now. Well, it's an institutional pillar, right? You know, uh, like you've been describing, so many things hang off of it. But once you start questioning that, then you start questioning, well, why does NASA need to have 20 or 60 billion dollars a year every year to not like actually do anything, you know? And right. Neil deGrasse Tyson's like, oh, well, we have the pencil because of, you know, because of NASA. We have right. like, you know, whatever GPS because of NASA. And it's like, okay, great. But like, dude, this much money every year, it yeah. kind of seems like a shell game, you know? Yeah. And then you start questioning, like, well, why? Why does like, you know, the Antarctica Treaty exist? You know, it's like the only thing that you and that the United Nations can agree upon. And the flat well, earth, you know, flag or the flat earth model is their flag. And like, yeah, what's going on. You it's know. The, the Antarctic thing, which we didn't really touch on, but I, I should bring up really quick, which is yes. it's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. And not why? only that, why, Mark Sargent, why is that? Wait, well, because Antarctica, well, yeah, in a short, short version, if you are looking at the flat earth is the UN flag. By the way, the UN flag is missing one very specific thing, which is Antarctica. Mm -hmm. It's like, why would you leave off an entire continent? Unless well, because we don't want anyone to talk about it. <laughs> it's the wreath. <laughs> it's the wreath going around the outside. And it's like, uh -huh. people's like, well, no, you could, you couldn't fit Antarctica out the way you laid it out. It's like, then lay it out differently. Yeah, just you know, you don't have to, you don't have to lay it out that way. There's plenty of maps that that have Antarctica on it, but you decide not to. But the mm -hmm. big reason is you don't want people there for the loose end side of things. Um, imagine again, part of my the 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 uh, Illuminati meetings I have to attend. The, the one of the, the meetings is okay. Why you know why lock down Antarctica? It's like okay, well here's one oil and gas companies. They have huge amounts of of liquid resources. They have gobs of cash. I mean, come on, they can start fracking in your backyard tomorrow mm -hmm. if they want it. They could make that happen and do and have in a lot of cases. It's like oh no, we can absolutely frack. We can break the rules. We just throw truckloads of money at people and they take it. Imagine. Yeah. But th those same companies aren't even allowed. This was that was this is the the one that turned me. Not only are they not allowed to set up shop in Antarctica, no corporation is. Yeah, they're not even allowed to talk about it. That's the part that gets me. The Antarctic right. Treaty. It's not that it's unbroken. It's that it's not even contested. Yeah, 
British Petroleum, a great example. It's like oh, British Petroleum after the war. I mean, they need the resources. It's like British Petroleum should have been running full page ads in the London Times every freaking month saying how great it would be for us to start setting up exploratory, you know, oil and gas research in, in Antarctica. They're not even allowed to do that. You don't do that doesn't happen unless national security steps in where you have one guy going into the president or the board or whoever runs the show and you say, okay, so national security, you're not doing anything down there ever. Okay. And if you think about it, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll stop you. And if you quit or retire, whatever, give them our card and we will talk to them and we, uh -huh. we make sure that that doesn't happen. And the reason why is because an oil and gas company, think about it again, the Illuminati meetings, you you have uh, they start setting up shop and then all of a sudden uh, there's a snowstorm and a plane goes off course way off course and then they see something they probably shouldn't well that's a loose end mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden this meeting terms is like what about a helicopter what about this and all of a sudden somebody at the end it's always some guy at the end it's like just freaking just lock it down nobody goes there yeah. where, where nobody no, and which has like, happened by the way like there are accounts of like people flying over the wrong parts of Antarctica. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, like seeing vanish. things they shouldn't you, see. You don't. You, know. you don't go there. the The same thing applied for to backtrack a little bit with the Apollo missions, um, and the and the stars, yeah. which is you got these meetings back in the 1960s. Like, well, how do we have the Orion Orion Belt lined up here? Blah blah blah. You know, the nerds arguing over each other. It's like, well, the procession and how everything's gonna. You know, start working in Greek metaphysics, and then some guy at the end, it's like, dude, just freaking black it out. Yeah, they, they make it so easy. No stars. Like, no stars. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay. Cool. And how oh, yeah. with, somebody asked for stars? What do we say? Well, it's exposure setting. Same mm -hmm. thing. Sorry, real quick, because I love beating mm. up Apollo. Um, with, <laughs> the, with the space suits, you know, the any any pressurized anything, anything soft in a vacuum chamber expands until it bursts. That basketball, football, volleyball, take your pick, right? There's only one thing in the history of anything that's never done that, and that is the spacesuits from um, from any program, including NASA. The early NASA spacesuits, not a secret, were plastic and metal, and they looked like a B movie nightmare. You know, they were walking around. It's like, it's like, how are these guys even going to be climbing ladders? And you guys are going ladders, dude. How, you know, the size of the spaceship we'd have to build, and then some genius at the end of the table goes. As far as I know, nobody takes physics classes in high school. <laughs> what if we just run a freaking soft suit and then put it on television? Mm -hmm. Anyone going to question it? It's like, well, what if they question? It's like, how many people could that possibly be? We'll say, well, the secret's in the backpack. We're going to tell them what the backpack is. Nope, that's classified. Yeah. National security. But national security. And that's it. And and again, because I when I'm when I'm out of country, well, I'm back before the pandemic, I would ask people, I go, I go, in this side of the United States, I get it. You know, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? Wave the flag, rah, rah. You know, we're, we're the best, America. right? Yeah, yeah, America. <laughs> right? Uh, but I go, why do you people in whatever European country, we'll just say Sweden. Why, why do you Swedish people think the Americans went to the moon? Everybody said the same thing. It's like, well, because it was on television. And the American news wouldn't lie. They were, absolutely, <laughs> they were absolutely dead serious when I when they said that to me. Wow. And I couldn't help. I couldn't help myself. I'd be like, come on. Yeah. I go, we lie about everything. That's what we yeah. do. Um, real, real quick, sorry, one more side story, um, which is this will give you kind of an idea. Which was when I was in um back before I was doing Flat Earth, I, I went because I wanted to visit the pyramids. And um because people said if you stand by the pyramid, you understand that we had nothing to do with the building of that thing at all especially if you're next to cairo which is a dump literally a dumpster fire uh -huh. and i'm i'm there and i'm i'm, I'm going over to the queen's temple and there's all these kids grade school kids running around me and and, and they're looking at me and like tugging on me and stuff i'm going what the, I, you know tour guide it's like what the hell is with the kids right it's like oh it's the first american or first white Amer american they've seen outside of television and i go and <laughs> and they go, they go, well, you know, you're, you're part of the new world. I'm going, okay, we, one, we don't c call that anymore. <laughs> I, and I go, and they're like, you're like a rock star. And I go, okay, what shows are you watching over here? You know what shows they watch? Shrek. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dallas, <laughs> Dynasty, Falcon's Crest, not standing, you know, where everybody's incredible millionaires. The only problems they have usually is who's cheating on who. And I'm going, 
wait, those are the only shows you guys are, are, are watching? It's like, well, they're the only ones the Americans are putting out over here. I'm just going, that's genius. That's so that's smart. Freaking genius. Because that's a we, Benny Gesserit move right there. You know. The, the last part I want to say about this is there's a wonderful video out there. If you've ever seen it, it doesn't matter if you're into rock music or not. Um, it's by a band, German band called Rammstein. Mm-hmm. And it's called we, We're All Living in America. Mm-hmm. And what they did was they recreated in a German, burned out German factory, the entire Apollo setting. We down to the freaking astronaut uniforms, which they actually purchased, you know, not not the full wow. blown suits, but the outer shell purchased mm-hmm. from the actual company that made it. And it is color palette perfect. Really? Absolutely color palette perfect. But the point was, is that while they're they're jamming out in the, on, on the moon's surface, right, they're broadcasting to all these countries. And while they're doing it, showing that basically America can project any image it wants anywhere and people will buy it because it's on television. And sorry, the last part of this, which is um, there was a, a quote in from the song, which I loved so much, which was America got so good at it. And and they were talking about, you know, we're living in America. It's Coca-Cola and sometimes war. <laughs> And it is, it's like, oh, that's so perfect. Because <laughs> it, it is our, it's our, the American way. Yeah, it is our branding. You know, our branding is everywhere. But by the way, if you have something that we want, <laughs> you put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Uh huh. Yeah. Let's get Toby anyway. Keith up there wrapped in a big Coca Cola flag. You know. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Another quick, sorry. Another quick side uh, Coca Cola thing. So, Coca Cola, you know, been around forever. Back in the day when, when they used to, okay two parts to this one was I, I dealt with a company that made the high fructose corn syrup for coca-cola okay. I, in north carolina and i saw oh isn't that funny you know back in the day they used to use coca leaves and and you know because it, there was cocaine there were trace amounts of cocaine he goes what do you mean used to be and i go yeah. i go well you know you don't do it anymore he goes dude <laughs> he goes we absolutely still put coca leaves in coca-cola he goes but because it's below the fda threshold of ingredients that you have to announce and remember it has to be a certain percentage before you put it on the can and he goes we create piles and piles of low-grade cocaine at our factory when we make the syrup i go what do you do with it because we have to keep it in a vault and then the government comes by and and takes it once a month and mm-hmm. it takes a pile of cocaine out of wow house. i go i go to destroy he goes yeah to destroy i'm yeah. sure yeah to destroy sure but, but the other part was um in world war ii I'm so full of trivia. Um, <laughs> in World War II, we had a Coca-Cola factory in Berlin, right? Mm-hmm. But because Coca-Cola is, you know, America, red, white, and blue, except for the blue, that's Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> they um, they didn't want to lose the factory. Again, money rules all, right? So magically, within a week's time, they tore down all the Coca-Cola banners. And you know what was born right then and there? Fanta. Fantasy oh, yes. uh, in in purple and orange, and that and that factory, as far as I know, went on, did bang up business for years and years yeah. and years. Yeah, just, yeah, just to keep the machine going. So, all right. awesome. clever, well, I never clever. thought about the Hegelian dialectic of Pepsi being blue and Coke being red and white. Yeah, that's interesting because during the Pizza Hut, you know, the, the when we were kids, like the uh, the coke pepsi wars of the mm-hmm. late yeah. 80s and early mm-hmm. 90s yeah you know the pepsi challenge and mm-hmm. oh yeah. yeah all that stuff man yeah. hygelian dialect it, what is it it's luciferian <laughs> there we go <laughs> there it is works yeah. origin this has been awesome man i'm so sorry we're pressed for time we got no no, no. I, hey, no I'm, I'm just glad i could do it today i'm sorry yeah was, uh, i am too stuff. thank you it's yes. been awesome yeah it's been fun this cool. has been yeah. so cool you've had great answers to my questions yeah. You give me a lot to well, think about. If, if you need anything else, a quick plug. I don't do a, a long yes. plug. If you, need, you guys need to look me up for any reason. Just go into any search engine. I don't care what it is and type in Flat Earth Mark. You will find me. Eventually, you'll find the <laughs> rabbit holes and go down. Uh, I am not the only person by a long shot that makes content. There are tons and tons of peop- people that make great content out there. Um, got a couple of books on Amazon, the Netflix documentary, which I think is only on Amazon now. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, just again, go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth Mark, you'll, you'll find my stuff. What are the names of your books real quick? Uh, there's Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. That's on Amazon. Uh, Flat Earth Clues, End of the World. I'll play on words there. Uh, that's on Amazon. And then I wrote a survival guide as we were going into the pandemic. Well, actually, I wrote it before the pandemic, but my publisher says, oh, yeah, I'd put it in there because who knows what's going to happen now. And it's called uh, Empty Shelves. 
how nice. to sur- how to survive your corner of an American apocalypse. It's only meant for Americans. Okay. So because I can't really speak for other countries it's like whatever they do in an apocalypse. OK, uh-huh. <laughs> but it's uh, it's general. It's general stuff. It's not like how to beat zombies or aliens right, right, or, right. Or, or zombie aliens or reverse vampires or anything like that. <laughs> it's um, it's strictly a uh, long term power outage. So a long term power outage. Nice. Hey, have some, have you know, some that's progression. a smart move, Mark, because, you know, everybody says that that's like the deadliest thing. If the power grid goes down for, you know, two, three months. You're losing like seventy something percent of the population. Oh yeah, so that, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a very, very wise. Well, I mean, conversation. Thanks. I mean, it is. But for me, I again, I don't attend all the meetings, but I attend some of them. <laughs> which is, uh, you can't let the po- the power is the last thing to go out because they've gotten so good at the narrative. Meaning, yeah. as long as these are functioning. Well, sorry, these are these are functioning then um uh you've got control of the narrative Mm -hmm. you know they can they can push out whatever they want to all the phones i mean come on there's more smartphones uh more people have smartphones than have running water so with that in mind i mean you can do whatever so the power grid when it goes well then 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 everyone's on their own but until then you can basically push you can kind of steer people the way you wherever you need to uh-huh. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of idiots out there, as you know. Uh-huh. I've, met, I've met a lot in the last three years, and it's been <laughs> disheartening. So, no shortage of those. New. Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Clues. Mark Sargent, YouTube. Um, yeah, anywhere else where people can find you before we let you go, so that we can point no, you. To the right no, again, I, again, just wherever you are, whatever you're using, just again, type in Flat Earth Mark. You'll, flat you'll, Earth you'll, Mark. You'll, you'll, yeah, you'll get there. Awesome, awesome. Well, we have had a blast talking to you. Hello, Maggie.